Hello everyone, this is ATS Guest Gear back with some more Bronze League Heroes! That is right, the series where we have a lot of fun, we have a lot of laughs, and we cast the very best of the very worst. Down the bottom left side, it is going to be Gick! Am I really going to be saying Gick this entire time? That is one of the silliest names I've ever had to say as a caster. And up at the top left side, not to be confused with Tasteless, it is Charmless! Unfortunately, someone has stolen all of his lucky charms, which is very, very sad for him. But it is going to be a TVZ. And uh, remember, guys, you can send your replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend Sinvicta does do the sorting, and he has sorted through... Well, I think we've gotten, like, thousands of submissions, but uh, we still love going through them. He actually live streams going through them, so if you want to see kind of the ones that don't necessarily make it, or the ones that do make it, because he does live stream a lot of those, then uh, you can check it out. Now, we are going to be having a crazy wallet over here from Charmless. Whoa! Actually, press enter key. You be crazy, Charmless! Alright, sorry, that was... I was trying to make that look uh, like I intended to do that. Now, I'm wondering, is that a wall in that is nice and tight? It's actually sometimes hard to tell in this game. Especially on the new maps, I feel like there's locations that look like it is a tight wall in, and then a bunch of Zerglings are in your base, and you're like, oh... I miscalculated that slightly. Now, uh, Gick, right now, going to be going for an early-ish pool. Going to be going for the good old 12 pool. He's also got the extractor on the way. We'll be throwing those drones right on in there for some Zergling speed. And this is going to be some early, early pressure right now. Now, Charmless, I don't know if he can actually get his wall in up in time. Uh, he might actually just take a lot of damage from this right from the get-go, because if he goes straight for Lings and actually times everything out perfectly, these Lings are going to be a knockin' pretty darn soon. Does he have the Overlord on the way? Nope, just the drones for now. We'll have to start an Overlord with his next Larva if he wants to make Zerglings, or he could just make a Queen, I suppose, but should be an Overlord. There it is! Starts the Overlord right there. And the timing of this is a little bit more economic than I actually expected it to be, so it's going to be delaying the rush on those lings a tad bit. He should be starting the queen right away. Oh, look at that. Got the queen started and should be going for the Zergling speed. Now, normally, uh, as Zerg, if you're going to be going for a pool this early versus Terran, you'll go ahead and pull your three drones off of gas right at 100 because you want to expand on the back of it if you're playing like a macro style. But if you're just goofing around and you want to win with a bunch of Zerglings, uh, you can go for it. Then you would still pull your drones off gas. That was a really bad example. But uh, either way, Charmless right here setting up another depot right there. And what's he going to be dropping? Looks like a bunker goes down and could drop a factory right here to kind of finish this wall in if he wanted to. It would actually be super, super safe if he did that. Two Lings going to be moving out right now. Neither player having scouted out of their base. Uh, those Lings are on the move command. They have been given many commands indeed, and lots of money on the in the bank. Oh, that depot, if it was just down a little bit, I think that would finish the wall in. Doesn't look like the wall in's going to be done in time. The Zerglings will be able to spot this. Tech Lab is on the way for Charmless. This wall in looks a little bit ramshackle, but it's just going to have to do, as the Marines are going to have to be the ones who hold the line. They do manage to kill off the, uh, the first Zergling scout there. Zergling speed nearly done. Do we have a bunch of lings on the way? We got four on the field. Should be five total if I remember correctly. Well, I do, as nothing has actually happened in this game yet. But uh, six lings on the way. We got a Baneling Nest uh, up as well. So Gick is wanting to end this game very, very quickly. He's saying, you know what? This is Bronze League Heroes, man. He's probably not saying this, but he should be. This is Bronze League Heroes, man. I'm going to go for an early attack. Screw expanding. That's, like, overrated. Now, I would say that this Wallen could definitely use some love. If nothing else, you want to at least force the Banelings, but I don't even know if Banelings are going to have to be forced right now because there's nothing here really defending the entrance. So Charmless is actually going to have a little bit of trouble here as the Ling's going to be moving out. That Zergling speed is done, which means they're going to be rushing all the way across the map. Gick is getting ready for an attack. Now, we do have a Widowmine on the way, and actually he places that Widowmine perfectly. He can actually uh, stop just about all the pressure that's going to be coming his way, but this is going to be a lot of Zerglings right now. And you got to remember that this is not completely walled in yet, so I think these Zerglings are actually going to be able to get in here right now. Uh, Combat Shields is on the way. Oh, but the Banelins are on the way as well, so he's going to go for a Baneling Bust instead of going for not that, which I think going for just pure Zerglings could be disaster. Oh god, but the Widow Mine's gonna be on the ramp. There's the first Widow Mine gonna burrow on the ramp, and keep in mind, when you're playing at this level, Widow Mines can kill all of your units. So it looks like the Banelings right now, they're geared up, the Zerglings here as well. It looks like the Widow Mine should 
take out the preliminary Zerglings, and then the Banelings will be able to do their damage. We're just going to have to wait and see, as a lot of Zerglings and Banelings are here in the middle of the map. We're only at the seven-minute mark. Looks like it's going to be a pretty early time to attack. Two more Lings are on the way, but Gick has a lot of money in the bank. These are the, uh, the Inject Larva Kids which I like to think are just for some reason like the rich kids and then the regular larva are like the poor kids because, you know, they, they, you have to make them one at a time. There's not a whole lot going on and then the rich kids move into town. So we'll see if it's the rich kids who get killed off by the widow mine or if it's going to... Why, did, why am I calling Zerglings rich kids? That doesn't even make sense, but here we go. Oh, God, the Widow Mine. The Widow Mine is in such a good spot. Oh, no, he's actually going to kill the Banelings, I think. Oh, avert your eyes. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That Banelings like what? What? No big deal. Uh, no big deal, guys. Why do Banelings have kill counters? Think about that. Oh my god, that Widow Mine. I literally, I, I literally put my fist in my mouth. That was ridiculous. So many kills there. Oh, you know, just one Widow Mine for 725 resources lost. That first Widow Mine being a huge detonation right now. Gick is probably not too pleased with. Oh my god, that was so sick! But here we go again. There is a widow mine behind the wall, and unfortunately, it's not there to defend those marines. And the rest of the banelings are going to detonate there. Oh, the widow mine! Is it gonna activate? No, oh, it's already activated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got a little excited there for nothing. That one banelings should get taken out by the marauder. But uh oh, SCVs in your mineral line. I mean, oh god, the baneling. Oh god, the baneling is so close. Might not even need the Baneling here. All right, well, that was a little anticlimactic. But either way, the same amount of damage has been dealt to those workers. Oh, there he goes. The Baneling's like, no, I'll wait until there's only one SCV to, to detonate. Uh, we do see more Widow Mines on the way here. This is not looking very good for Charmless right now. As uh, these Widow Mines are live. Boom, gets one hit there. I think that was only a one hit, one kill, though. Which, in, you know, in Call of Duty is pretty cool. But in StarCraft... Not so much when you're killing Zerglings. You really can't brag, yo, bro, I killed a Zergling in, like, one hit. It's like, okay, you and everybody else. All right, those look at the engineering bay. Got to get taken out. The supply depot going down as well. Oh, dear. We got more Zerglings at the natural as well. Charles is actually in a lot of trouble right now as uh, he does have the Marines trying to move out. He does have combat shields but no stim. And, unfortunately, does not have enough units to cut off these links. These poor Marines are so dead. But you know who's not dead? The Widow Mine. And there he goes right there. Should be able to kill off all those lanes, or at least a lot of them. And does do uh, quite a bit of damage with that. Looks like the factory will be forced to lift off. More lanes are over here, but the Widow Mine slowly eating all these lanes alive. Taking a look here, we have a sergeant ranked Widow Mine, as well as a corporal. So you got to be saluting these ones, I believe. Sergeants, you have, to, you have to salute the sergeant? I don't know, but pretty soon at this rate, they're going to be promoted to commander if we're not too careful here. But uh, Gick has got to watch out, man. He's at 31 supply versus the 11 of Charmless. He keeps sending in units, though, and the Widow Mines are having a heyday with it. That Marine trying to gather will probably be killed by the Widow Mine. Yes, he was. And the Widow Mine over here is up to 12 kills, now 15. And, oh, my God, Charmless is actually held on by some weird twist of fate. Uh, Charmless is still actually in this game. He's currently losing his barracks. I don't think he's going to be able to repair that with his five minerals. Although dropping three mules, not bad. Not bad. Could definitely go for landing this command center, though. We'll kill off that Zergni, which still managed to get a kill. Oh, man. So, Gick being uh, pretty cost-effective here in these engagements. Able to do lots of damage. Workers killed overall 24, which leaves zero SCVs in this game. This SCV is going to spawn and be like, uh, where is everyone? Why is there no SCVs? And Charmless is going to be like, don't worry about it. D don't even worry about it, bro. It's going to be fine. Here comes more Zergni and Banelings, though. They're going to be rolling in. They take out the Marines. The Widow Mine, though. It gets a couple of kills, and the other Widow Mine is still active. Cleans it on up. I cannot believe this. Nope, you can stop attacking your barracks now. You don't. I know you're angry. Oh, God, they're still shooting the barracks, aren't they? No, they finally did stop shooting the barracks, but it was too late as the Lings had already streamed in. All right, so nonstop action so far in this game. These mules are about to time out. So oh, another Widow Mine hit there. 18 kills. That is the Captain Widow Mine right there. And uh, we have the another captain and a sergeant. So two captains and a sergeant. Does like the links right here are going to be working on the orbital command. Can he kill off the widow mines? That's the real question. How many SCVs are we up to? Uh, still zero SCVs after losing that one. One has just spawned though. So a round of applause, everybody, for the SCV that has just spawned. We'll see how long he can actually stay alive. And uh, the one barracks already burnt down. This factory is so close to begin the burning down process, but guess what? They do not want to give me a break. Gick is out for blood. 
He wants to end this game right away, just steamrolling through those Widow Mines. But I guess these Widow Mines are actually in a very, very good spot right now. So unless he sends in those Zerglings one at a time, which he's not going to. He's got to be careful. So many kills. Oh, God. The Marines right there are doing the, uh, they're almost like suicide bombers. Those are like the the, uh, the Terran version of the Baneling. Just stand over by the Widow Mine to bait them into it. Oh, my God. We have a Commander Widow Mine. Literally, when you're playing through the game and it says, Greetings, Commander. Welcome for another mission. Yada, yada. You are actually a Widow Mine. You are not a person. You are a self-aware Widow Mine who is going to be uh, running the entire game. So we have a Commander Widow Mine. We also got the cute Recruit Widow Mine. He hasn't seen nearly as much action. The captains, though, have been there uh, from the beginning as we do now have the Overseer out. I also love how Gick got a lair for the Overseer and he's still sitting on one base. I think that's my favorite part here, is he is one base zerging it up all day, as is to be expected in Bronze League Heroes. We also do have Ventral Sacks on the way, which is which is still a weird upgrade for me to say. Oh, you know, we got Ventral Sacks up in here. It's just, it's just weird to me, and that's fine, but uh, we'll see if the drop actually manages to make anything happen. Does he have Overlord Speed? Yes, he does. If I'm not mistaken, he does actually have Overlord speed here. 1.88 is the movement speed. Oh, the Widow Mines. You got to watch out, buddy. He's trying to kill them all. And he, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, all the Zerg players out there just died a little bit inside. Uh, wait, isn't that Recruit? Did he get promoted to a commander already? 32 kills on this Widow Mine. And uh, we have two commanders now. Now, the real question is, is do we have too many commanders in the kitchen? That is... That's what we're wondering, or is having this many commanders actually good for his game? Uh, well, oh god, make it stop, this is so painful! Ah, that one Ling survived. But man, the commander on the back is still the one kicking it. The other commander was a short-lived commander. He was born into commandership. Oh, Gick with the smack talk saying, why no surrender? I win already! Oh, now I know who I'm cheering for, Mr. Charmless Gick with the, uh, with the, with the smack talk. And it's so funny when they're like, hey, why don't you GG already? And then follows it up with, I've already won. Well, actually, if you already won, uh, Charmless would be out of the game. That, that's going to be my pro tip of the day. Don't smack talk. Bunch of Ling's going to be running up here. Now, this is actually enough to uh, cause some trouble. If he just sends in one Ling at a time, runs them at the Marines, he can do splash damage to the Marines. He's got to be fine. Here he goes right now, but they're in a big group again. No! Oh, my God. This is so bad. This is like me trying to play a sport. I, I, I get a good start. I run across the field, and then I die. That is exactly what happens to those Zerglings as uh, it looks like th there's only two Lings left, and they do not. They do not. They don't want to go over there. I can tell you that they don't want to go over there. They're, they're thinking about it. They're like, all right, here comes the Overlord. So, ooh, maybe we're going to see the coveted two Zergling drop. We'll see if that's going to be able to do two damage or do enough damage. Doing two damage would actually be pretty good considering how few Zerglings he has right now. Now, we do have some trivial hooks on the way. Baneling speed, Zerglings on the way as well. And this is actually going to be it for Gick. Because he has no more money that he can mine from. Look at this. These mineral patches are basically going to disappear. Some of them still have like 800 minerals, though, because he hasn't had enough drones to fully saturate that. No, these are not Broodlords. We are used to seeing Broodlords at the 19-minute mark. But these are the 19-minute mark Overseers, which are going to attempt to guard the Zerglings. Let's take a look over here at Charmless. Charmless is actually in the lead in supply, which is hilarious. He's just... He, he doesn't give a damn, man. He's just... Oh, and he says, nah. I'm assuming he's trying to spell nah there. He's just like, no. No, not only am I going to wait three minutes to respond to your BM, I'm also not going to spell my words correct, and I'm still going to kill all of your units. Is exactly what he said here. So a little bit of a rivalry going on. I also love how there's no stim pack. Screw it. Who needs it? Here comes the Zerglings right now. The Overseer's here. They've got to be careful. Can he actually make something happen? Oh, you got to be careful there. There is enough Widow Mines to actually make this a uh, a devastating epic fail of the day. Which is really what this game should be. As we do have the Zorglings right now going to attempt to get some map control. We could really see an expansion. Pro tip of the day. Expand before the 20 minute mark, guys. I don't care how Gosu you think your one base Zerg is. You need to expand before the 20 minute mark. Now, Gick obviously making the mistake. Why are you expanding all the way over here? 
Uh, all right, he is going to double expand, which I guess is okay, but should definitely take this expansion as quickly as possible. So he will actually have a base advantage now that he has expanded at the 20 minute mark. We'll see if he can actually make anything happen with Zerglings. I would recommend making any other unit other than Zerglings. Maybe not Mutalisks either, since his control has obviously been like... This, this is some top three Woodley control so far this game. So we'll see if he can actually make it happen with these Lings. Uh, I think the answer to that is no. He may have missed his chance already to actually engage. And look at this! Look at this! Charmless setting up quite the epic minefield right here, which means that the Marines can swing in and out of the main base and natural and not worry about the natural being undefended. Oh, it's going to be drop time. Unfortunately, he only brought two Overlords. So he's going to be dropping two Overlords worth of units at a time. Which I gotta say, I do like the idea of doing drops. I wish more players would do that. He is gonna drop it right in the mineral line. Does uh, does Charmless know about it just yet? He does have the one siege tank. Huh, we'll see. We'll see if we can actually make anything happen with these lings, though. Widow mines are in position, though. This is a new recruit, Widow Mines. So we'll see if we can get some of those money shots we've seen before. I don't think he's even gonna need to. Oh god, here it comes. Make it stop. Make it stop the Widow Mine there. Not as much splash damage to the Marines as I thought uh, there could have been. But the drop does get cleaned up. The Overseers are like, well, we got to watch that happen. Now we're going to go ahead and fly away. Keep in mind, Overseers are so freaking fast, man. 2.75. That is so speedy, Gonzalez. We do have the Marines right now. He's slowly starting to get up a little bit of an army. He is super supply blocked, though. Got to remember that he did end up losing those depots. So he's going to continue to try and make more. And actually, he's already queued up some more here. So that supply block will be broken down in due time. More Zerglings are on the way, though. Oh, the Widowmine there hitting the Overlord, which means goodbye, Widowmine. Although, two Badelings to kill a Widowmine. To me, that uh, doesn't quite seem very cost-effective. Oh, God, more Lings tried to run up here. That that was actually probably a hilarious detonation that we just missed. But it looks like more SCVs are going to get taken out. The Marine Army starting to look pretty terrifying. All the Lings going to get taken out as well. Pretty sure they were on the move command right there, or told to attack a specific Marine, which you never want to tell your Zerglings to attack a specific Marine. Trust me, the AI will control them much better than you if it's a battle that you're going to win anyway, or at least do a little bit of extra damage. Now, uh, more Zerglings on the way. I feel like Gick is suffering from what I like to call being really bad. He needs to uh, make more units of just Zerglings at this point. He needs to go for Roaches. I know. I know a lot of you are going to say, Husky, you're being so mean to the Bronze League players. Don't be so mean. Number one, he's smack talk, so I can make fun of him all I want. And number two, just learn from it. Don't make don't make this many Zergling Bailing if you can't deal with the Widow Mines. Now, it is 72 supply here. We'll see if Git can get himself back in this game. He's got the Banelings now done. He's got a lot of money in the bank, but guess what? So does Charmless right now, as it does look at the Lings right here going to attempt. Oh, God, still with the two Overlord drops. I think some of these are Banelings as well. That is not, oh, they're all Banelings, so hopefully he would have went straight for the workers or something like that. We'll most likely unload these units here. Indeed, he does. Lots of Zerglings, lots of Banelings. More Zerglings going to be showing up right now, but uh, I don't really think there's anything he can do at this point. I feel like Charmless hasn't ever actually left his, he hasn't. He has not left his base, man. He is staying right at home. I mean, why change it if uh, if you're just fine? That is that is exactly what I want to know. And he says, you know what? There is no reason to change it. Looks like the Overseer there got to be scouting around. He spotted, look at that Overseer control. That is top three Wood League right there. Um, great Overseer control. Oh, almost loses it there to the Missile Turret. But again, he's top three Wood League, so he's going to be just fine with that. Um, so at this point, he's got one last attack in him. Oh, God, here it comes in slow motion. Oh, no, the Zerglings. What are you doing? Oh, God, the Banelings. No. <laughs> Those units, they didn't even, the Marines didn't even have to shoot. They're just like, all right, sit back, set up the bleachers, and enjoy that. Oh, God, that was so painful. But, hey, he contaminated the barracks. So there was no Marines being produced there for a short while. Oh, God. He does have the three bases, though. So maybe he can play into the uh, the fact that the Terran player has not left the game just yet. Gick right now is making drones. He's actually tech switching. We have the 27-minute tech switch to Mutalisks, which is the absolute worst unit he could be getting right now versus the Widow Mine. Since these Widow Mines, is that one Widow Mine still alive? 17 kills, 1 kill, 16 kills, 4 kills. I think we eventually lost the Hero Widow Mine. And the Mules right there trying to engage, but that's just not going to happen. Um, let's see, 4, 17, 16, 19, and 4, yeah. So a lot of Widow Mines out. Honestly, Gig still has a 
chance-ish if our Terran player never moves out. And also he could win by just burrowing Banelings on the path of where the Marines are going to be attacking. If he burrowed those Widow Mines and then detonated them, then that would even up this game right away. And I, I'm going to laugh if Charmless wins without ever leaving his base. Now, normally if a player does an all-in and you defend it, and they'll leave the game. But in this game, it has been 29 minutes of all-ins, and Charmless still has not left the base. Maybe he thinks he's just playing SimCity, and uh, the things that he's dealing with are just like plagues or something. And he's like, no, I'm just going to sit here and build up my city. It's going to be fine. Thor is here. So he does have a Thor now out, which is just absolutely hilarious, because even now the Baneling landmine idea that I had is not going to be enough, because he has to deal with those Thors as well. So taking a look at the production tab right now, more drones going to be on the way for Gik, which I think is the correct choice. The Marines are moving out now. Looks like Charmless is making a move on the map. He has now explored more of the map than he has in the first 30 minutes. It does look like these units will be taken out. The Marines going to town. They mean business. Take out the Overseer as well. The Overlord's here trying to buy time. But Gick right now, unfortunately, is not really macroing that well. He's still making Zerglings. He is going to stick to that Zergling Muta till the day he dies, which I think that, that day is going to be today. I don't know that he has much of a chance. But uh, we'll see if Charmlish manages to mess this up. We have seen some pretty epic fails out of Gick. Maybe it is time for Charmless to uh, return the favor and have an epic fail of the day. Like, if there was a fail blog for StarCraft, this would be this would be right up there. Oh, God, the army is finally mobilizing. It is ready to go. And, man, is it terrifying. We have no upgrades. Oh, actually, we do have two, uh, two attack upgrades on these Marines. That's actually quite impressive. More Mutalisks are on the way, but the Missile Turrets are a little bit too much. Don't think anything's going to come of that. And he is working on uh, Stim Pack, finally. So we got the 33-minute and 33-second Stim Pack timing coming out. And uh, even has an SCV brought along for the ride. He's carrying some Vespine gas. Why the hell not? And uh, we'll see. This is all... I love how he... He's like just now expanding here, so if this attack doesn't work, he's actually in a lot of trouble. But I gotta say that uh, Gick has had a lot of time just to build a ridiculous amount of drones, and he has currently not done so. As the Mutalists now are going to be moving on out. Might actually be able to... No, that's not going to happen. This, this harassment was just not meant to be. As there is way too many Marines, the missile turrets are there, ready to go. Oh, God, careful there with the Mutas, trying to fly at a good angle. Oh, and he's going to run into more units. Oh, and into the Widow Mines. Oh, God. Oh, and into the missile turrets. <laughs> oh, God. I love how that was so perfectly failed that every single unit died, like, down to the last shot. He couldn't have failed any better. There's the GG from Gick. At least he is kind enough to throw out a GG. I don't even think sh uh, Charmless should say anything. He does say GG. Here come the Lings right now. Can he make something happen? Looks like he will actually do some decent damage here. The Banelings can get in there. They will. Whoa. That didn't kill anything. The plus two attack uh, keeping them alive as they burn through those Banelings quite quickly. Now, Gix still does have 2,000 resources. Oh, God. He said hard lucky. I don't... Hard Lucky Small... Was that passive-aggressive? Is that an insult? Is, is he... What does Hard Lucky mean? <laughs> Dude, this is like... This is like the, uh... You can't not pool a Zerg. Like, all... Just all the things that, that people say at the end of Bronze League Heroes... Hey, dude, uh, hard lucky, smiley face emoticon. It's like, what does that even mean? I don't even know. What I want to see again, though, is the epic fail mutalisks. These are... These are the most fail mutalisks I think I've ever seen. All right, let's just, uh... Let's just count... Let's just count how fail this was one step at a time. All right, so the Mutas are going to fly in. Here they go. They fly into the missile turret. That's going to be his fail number one. He turns around, ends up losing one Muta to the missile turrets. He's like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and swoop to the right side. Avoids all those units, but then he swoops into this army, so that's going to be fail number two. Now he's going to fly into the natural where the Thors are, and that's fail number three. Fail number four is the Widow Mines, which take them all out. And the final conclusion is fail number five with the Missile Turrets. The last shot there, killing off the Mutas. Oh, God. That's... I could just watch that all day. That was... That was depressing for those Mutalists, man. They did not stand a chance. That was a lot of Mutas, too. So, uh, anyways... This is why we love Bronze League Heroes. Absolutely hilarious things you would never expect to see. Uh, Charmless basically won by not leaving his base, which I, is very respectable for a 35-minute game. feel like we're watching Thorzane or something, man. Just never leaves his base. He don't care. All right, that was hilarious. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.
Hello everyone, this is HTS Guest here back with another Bronze League Heroes! This time it is going to be between David with an extra A because why the hell not? I like to think that he was typing it out and totally accidentally messed it up because he was like super drunk and then never went back. But anyways, it is going to be David! And up at the top left side, it is going to be XMEX's Zeno! Which I think it's one of those cool things that you do when you're like 15, where you're like, my name is going to be X Sideblades with a Z X X. It's going to be so cool. So I'm going to assume that it's the Me Clan. So it is going to be Me's Zeno. It is going to be David and Zeno duking it out here in a ZVZ. Now remember the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is number one, to enjoy StarCraft II, break it down to its basics, which is a lot of bad people playing the game with a few good ones as well. So it's all about enjoying the game for how it's supposed to be enjoyed, having a, having a laugh as they say, and also encouraging you guys to get out there and play. It don't matter what rank you are because the game is still fun as long as you, as you want it to be. Remember, we love to here to watch the best of the worst. That's the whole point of Bronze League Heroes. Been having tons of fun. I want to thank everyone who's been supporting it. Thumbs up and commenting and all that. Love reading through the comments. And also, you can submit your replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend Sinvicta is the one who has uh, been sorting through them. He has watched thousands of replays. That poor man, I don't know how he keeps his sanity, but he does it for the greater good. Now, he does spawning pool. is going to be going down right now. And the map is going to be Akalon Waste. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is ZBZ, which I, I don't know much about to begin with. And especially when it's Bronze League Heroes, there's no way to predict what these players are going to do. That's actually been my favorite part of Bronze League Heroes, is that you literally, when you load up a game, you have zero idea of what's going to happen. Because their builds are not refined, their strategies are not well thought out. It is just good old hilarity ensuing every single time. So uh, that is why it's been my favorite. Gas going to be finishing up here for both players. And yeah, one thing I want to talk about here really quickly is I don't normally talk about views or, or popularity or anything like that, but uh, I kind of want to gauge your guys' thoughts on Heart of the Swarm. Because I'm going to be honest, uh, the popularity of Heart of the Swarm seems to be lasting longer than I thought it would be. I think the, the word's starting to get out that Blizzard has revamped Battle.net. They've added a lot of features. They've added some really cool new units. And I personally, given I'm completely biased, but I personally think that Heart of the Swarm is a great game. Um, you know, I, I thought Diablo 3 was an okay game, not a lot of replayability on that, and uh, I, I think I would be a lot more upfront and frank if I didn't think this game was so good. So I I really like it. I'm kind of curious as to what you guys think. Is it a fun spectator sport? Do you enjoy watching it more than you did watching Wings of Liberty uh, be like at the start of Wings of Liberty? Um, kind of curious as to what you guys think. But anyways, Road to Warren going to be on the way. We have a random spine crawler coming up for Zeno. Zeno's going to have way more gas than he's going to know what to do with as he is on one base with a double gas, which is just a little bit overkill. This Overlord, <laughs> that is the Overlord suicide chant that he is cheering right now. <laughs> that just sounds more like Overlord Death Metal, which I should make an Overlord Death Metal song. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. I just, I just had the best idea ever. There he goes right there. It does eventually get taken out. But the Overlord has not really seen anything useful. He did see the Spine Crawler right there. I feel like Spine Crawlers are the ZBZ's Planetary Fortress where all players in the lower leagues just get a lot of them. Not that I can blame them. They are pretty awesome. David going to be transferring over quite a few drones here. But what is all this gas going to be for? As he does have the Layer Tech on the way. He's still on one base. I'm not quite sure what to expect here. The Ling's right there trying to make it up the ramp. That's not going to be happening, though. And the spine car, I assume, is going to be waddling down to the expansion. Yep, there he goes. In slow motion. They move so very slow. I love how they waddle so fast on creep, and as soon as they touch dirt, they're like, what do I do? What do I do? How do I how do, how do I walk? How does I walk? He is going to move it all the way down there, though, which I think is a good choice. I like this strategy. Going to be defending that natural. And so far, I want to say that David's going to win this game because he's actually making units Whereas Zeno is just, he, he's doing what Bronze League hero players do best. He is rushing straight for the infestation pit. Now the real question that's on everyone's mind, and by everyone I mean just me, is he going to go for the hive tech? Is he going to go for the mass burrowed infestors? These are the answers that will be seen in another exciting episode of Dragon Ball Z. I'm sorry, I will forever find that joke funny. He actually got Overlord Speed 
Did not somehow manage to uh, scout the infestation pit, though, as that is still hidden. The overlords over here, they're like, hey, should we scout out that base? Nah. Uh, well, I mean, he just finished researching overlord speed, so I mean, I feel like we should. Nah. All right, so he's not going to be doing that whatsoever. We do have the overlord here with the custom skin, going to be scouting out. You know what the custom overlord skin reminds me of? Those little pods that your parents put on top of the car when they go on vacation. You guys know what I'm talking about. Like, it makes you look as touristy as possible because you have this giant white pod on top of your car. That's kind of what it reminds me of of the overlords, where it's not really a new overlord skin. It's just like a new accessory where you can keep all your luggage in there. Oh, I'm sorry, little overlord. I shouldn't make fun of you. But uh, for now, we do have more spines going to be going down. Infestation pit is done. Oh! It is going to be the Swarm Host. Oh my god, he has made so many overlords that he doesn't even know what to do. We have an overlord race over here, and uh, if I was a racehorse and commentator, I would be commentating the hell out of this. Oh, and we have Blitzes the Sky going to be pulling up in the first place, and here comes Little Wiener Big Face. He's going to be coming around on the inside, and Destiny Cloudfist going to be... You got, okay, that was a joke about how ridiculous horse names are, okay? I don't know why one of their names had the word wiener in it, okay? We're all mature here. We can move past that, but we do have the... Uh, did I say little wiener big face? Is that what... Is that... <laughs> That's like the worst horse name ever. Anyways, we do have the Swarm Host. Got to be popping out of the eggs. The creep spread's actually pretty good. This is a better creep spread than I have when I play Zerg. So quite impressive there. The Overlord is going to be spotting that. But has he spotted the actual Swarm Host themselves? That is the real question there. Uh, still no base on the way. We do have the, the horses over here taking a break. Uh, look at this. Look at this. He said, hey, guys, do you want to go scout around the map? And the horse overlords say, nay. All right, I'm done. I'm done, guys. Please don't unsubscribe. Please forgive me. But regardless, this game is getting hilarious right now as the swarm hosts are ready to go still on one base. Remember my pro tip of the day as Zerg is never be on one base to the 10-minute mark no matter what matchup it is. I don't care if it's ZBZ. I don't care if you're really bad. Just throw down another expansion. Otherwise, this is why you're bad. Now, we do have the five Swarm Hosts here ready to go. They're going to be waddling around the map here. I, I, maybe he's playing the game where the uh, the sand over here is lava. He can only stay on the creep, which uh, the creep spread is going to continue here, which, you know, it's quite impressive. I'm, I'm okay with this. Um, one thing that's interesting about using multiple creep tumors is that your creep spread is so much faster that's ridiculous. I think it's faster than twice as fast because it pushes the creep out right away that you can actually plant that creep down or tune. Uh, what did I just say? Creep tumor tune? Creep Tumor down much earlier. Looks like the Locusts here are actually going to be doing lots of damage here to these Roaches, which is not something I normally say, but uh, it's very difficult to kill Swarm Hosts if you don't know what you're doing. Here comes wave after wave. How is he killing those Creep Tumors? Did he just kill that? Was that one that was just planted? Does he have an Overseer? Oh, he does have an Overseer. My God. Worst caster ever. We do have the Swarm Hosts here. Got to be able to clean up these Roaches. I, right as I say worst caster ever, I actually choke on my own spit because this game is so hilarious. Let's just chalk this replay up to drugs. I don't do drugs, I, I don't look at drugs, but let's just say, man, Husky was really on drugs for this cast, because that is the only excuse, but I am high on how hilarious Bronze League Hero games actually are. The swarm hosts here have slowly pushed a little bit further across the map. I like to think that these swarm hosts feel like they're gonna be attacking the natural, but they're actually so far away from the natural that they're just like, whoa, they're not gonna realize it though. They're just gonna keep on keeping on Looks like these locusts may actually somehow find something to attack here in the center of the map. But this is why it's Bronze League Heroes. If if we did not see ridiculous things like this, we would not be doing this right. Uh, I actually really like this game so far. There has been so many hilarious things already. It looks like they actually managed to waddle their way all the way across the map. He is still playing the lava game, refusing to go off of the creep. And uh, step off the creep, break your mother's back. That's, that's how the saying goes. And it does look like these locusts got to be moving on out and attempt to kill off some roaches. He will be able to. Now, this is the part of Bronze League Heroes that we all know and love where players forget how to spend money. Now, David right now is hovering 1,000 minerals. He's hovering 800 gas, which means at some point he could accidentally make like 20 ultralisks which is something that I absolutely love. But this is going to be the world's slowest Zerg push of all time. He is literally attacking his opponent at the speed of creep. 
which is something that I don't think I've ever said in a cast before, but I'm going to continue saying it in this game. He is attacking at the speed of Creep and the speed of Locust, which are a speed of a blindingly 1.88 movement speed, which I think is the same speed as Overlords with speed. Am I tripping? Yeah, 1.88. So he's attacking them at the speed of Overlords at this point. As we do have the Locust here, going to be doing just a little bit more damage, take out a couple roaches here and there. And David is just falling into this trap right now. I feel like a Mutalisk could win him this game, but that's okay because hindsight is 20-20, as they say. The Roaches here are going to be running all the way around the Locusts. They're taking so much damage, and guess what? The Locusts are protected. They have used proper protection. Looks like he will kill off one Swarm Host. Might be able to kill off a second one as well. Ah, no! That Swarm Host right there, seven kills with the Transfuse. Got to be able to hang on. The Overseer here might get taken out by this Queen. Once again, the Swarm Host refusing to move off of the Creep. This game is hilarious. Can I, I, know I, I know I've said that a lot, and I don't want to force it. It's one of those things where you should show, not tell. But I'm telling you guys, this game is hilarious. We have the Locust going to be moving out here. A couple of Spine Crawlers in position. All of a sudden, David's getting a little uncomfortable, man. This is uh, this is definitely awkward first date type, such a type level of awkwardness. As the Locust going to be moving into the main base, the Roach is here. We got the Roach Hit Squad. Here they go. Da na 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 na. This is uh, this is Alpha Team Six right here, going to be moving out, trying to take out the terrorist swarm host right here. We'll see if he can actually manage to do it. I don't think he's going to be able to. He's actually going to go for the counterattack. Oh, he could intercept some of these swarm hosts as well. He's going to get one right now. Can he kill off more? Yes, he will. Goodbye, swarm host. Actually making a smart move over here. Ah, killing the creep tumors there. A beautiful play. A textbook play as he's going to try and do more damage with these roaches. Can he actually make it happen, though? The answer is is no. He's going to end up losing those units. The Overseer is like, oh god, I do not want to die like all the other Overseers. And it may just happen. No! He was so young. He had so much to live for. Not really, let's be honest, because in this game, you just die as an Overseer. Here's the Locust right here. Hey guys, what's going on up here? As they do take out the Evolution Chambers, then for some reason just internally combust, because that's what Locusts do. And he is going to be able to take out that Roach right... Nope. Just kidding, not quite yet, but the reinforcements are continuing to stream down here. No, more Overlords going to get taken out here. This game is literally moving at the speed of creep. I wonder how fast it would take to get to the moon moving at the speed of creep. I'm sure that that's math that someone can figure out, but I'm sure as hell ain't going to do it. I can't even I can't even do like 3 plus 8 when I'm casting. So, uh, yeah, anyways, Locust got to be able to take out these spine crawlers now if they keep it up. I got to say, though, that David, he's got to learn how to invest this inheritance that he has found because he's got 2,000 minerals, 400 gas. The Locust finally taking out an Evo Chamber. Ever notice that the Evo Chamber has its own skeleton? How freaking creepy is that? We'll see if this one has a skeleton as well or if it does a different death animation. And there it is. Look at that. Isn't that super creepy? They have a giant skeleton. We already know that Zerg buildings are alive, but that just adds a little bit extra level of creepiness. The Locust guy continue knocking at the front door. Apparently roaches are the way to go, but we do have a Nidus Worm on the way. Oh, God. This is going to get hilarious mighty quick. Once again, the Swarm Hosts here, are they going to go off to Creep for the first time in their lives? These Locusts, our Swarm Hosts, will literally never go off of Creep. No! The drones! What are you doing? Don't go that way. But it was too late. They were already already dead. Excuse me. We do have the Nidus Network. It is done. It is eating up these units. Where's the Nidus Worm going to be? It looks like it's going to be over here. Nidus Worm on the top right side. Can he actually manage to pull it off? There it is. Does he notice it? He can see it, but that doesn't mean he notices it because this is Bronze League Heroes. Looks like even the Larva do not stand a chance versus these Locusts. He's going to be moving right into the main base. Here comes the Nidus Worm. It should be popping up right about now. Oh! Nope, it starts unloading right away. It never, it cuts through that awesome animation every time. But here's the roaches inside the main base. No! Okay, I thought for a second there they actually went off the creep, which means they were going to immediately die. So it is time for a base race. At first we had a horse race. Now it's time for a base race. We'll be stopping this upgrade, by the way. This one he is going to decide to send in all of his units. Could take out the nice network as well to guarantee the death of this main base. The queen is going to get taken out here as well. It looks like the roach is going to be taken out the main base. I actually don't know who's going to win this right now. I want to say the roaches have a slight advantage, but there's not that many buildings left for either player here. We will keep an eye on the structures tab. Every time a building disappears on here, we are one, one building closer to this being the crowning the victor right now. And if he was based on creep tumors, 
then I think that uh, Xena would end up taking this, but unfortunately it's not. There goes the Lair Tag, just disappeared right here. There is only four buildings remaining right now for Xena. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, uh, no, just seven. Just seven left right now. For, for David, can he actually do it? Can he hang on? We do have the new hatchery going to be going down here on the bottom right side for Zeno. David has spotted it with his renegade drone. Might actually be his only drone in the game. No, he's got two. <laughs> so one of his only drones. Oh, God, this drone right here is so dead. Is that a queen? The queen just took out the drone in his own base. Oh, God, the suspense is actually starting to kill me here as the Roach is going to be able to take this out. I still don't know who's going to win this game. The army supply should be almost tied. 44 to 58 worker supply. How often do you see this? 5 to 0 in a game that I still can't call the victor on. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Is he actually going to be eliminated right now? Is this his last building? I think the Nidus Worm might count as a building, too. We're about to find out if the Nidus Worm does count as a building or not. Don't you dare leave that spawning pool, though. The Nidus Worm is going to be the last building here with zero workers. Does it count? Oh, guys, sure hope it does. And yes, it does. The Nidus Worm counts as a building. That is his last building. How is a worm a building? We don't know. But here comes the final attack right here. Oh, guys, this is the last building for Zeno. Bring up the structures tab. Wait, yes, it is. It's his only building. Oh, no. He might actually get taken out here with a kill. Oh, he actually does it with the counterattack there. This drone is like, well, this is awkward. Oh, my God. He actually won with a Nidus Worm. The, I, oh, guys, guys. Can I just, come here, come here, lean in really close. Le lean in really, I feel so bad for Zeno. He was so methodical with the, with the Swarmos, with the creep spread all the way across the map. And then David's like, okay, well, I'm just going to go down there and kill you now. So, wow, I learned something new today. The Nidus Worm is the best unit in the game as it counts as not only a unit but also a building. You can transport units through it. You can win games by just having one. And I just realized that in base race situations, you can easily throw down nice worms anywhere on the map to help keep yourself in the game. So, oh my god, that was hilarious. All right, I'm actually going to just kind of go back and rewatch that game. I need a cold shower because that was amazing. Anyway, so hope you guys have enjoyed Bronze League Heroes. Send your games to huskyreplays at gmail.com and have your chance to be featured on this amazing series. So, hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you, everyone, for all the support. You're the best, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HDS Guest here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes! I gotta be honest, I just ate a bunch of food, <coughs> so my uh, my voice may sound a little scraggly. Then again, I am getting older, guys. When I started YouTube, I was like 21, now I'm like 25 or 26 or something, so I've been around the block. So if my voice starts to slowly get deeper and deeper and deeper, well... What do you expect when you yell for a living? But it is indeed gonna be Bronze League Heroes here! Down in the bottom right side, it is going to be Honest Abe. God, I love Bronze League Hero player names. They are always so good. Up in the top right side, it is going to be Mosasaurus, which I don't know what a Mosasaurus is. It sounds like an alcoholic beverage, but uh, it does have the, the word Saurus in it, which signifies to me that he is actually some sort of dinosaur, which I am okay with. Now, for those of you who do not know, Bronze League Heroes is uh, where we cast the best of the worst. And my god, is it a lot of fun. I get a little bit goofy. The games are really, really bad. But we have a lot of fun along the way. So again, it is going to be a PBZ. The map is going to be Star Station. Of course, uh, not forced cross spawns on this version of the map as it is an official Blizzard map. I believe that this was a Silver League level game. Not that it really matters, though, because I'm sure it's going to be absolutely lulzy. My good friend Sinvicta is the one who sorts through the files, and uh, he actually just recently got Master League, man, playing Zerg, so congrats to him. And uh, anyways, I did just get back from New York. Something, 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 something. And I am back on the casting bandwagon as my computer, uh, apparently while I was gone, decided to sleep around, got a virus, and I had to reinstall Windows. It didn't actually get a virus. I just wanted to make the sleeping around joke. Oh, this is when you know it's going to be a good game. We got double gateway off of one pylon right now. This is when you know you are about to watch an epic game. All right, so we got the first zealot going to be on the way. Pylon should be following it up here pretty soon. 
if Mosasaurus decides to uh, to go that route. I mean, going for more than one pylon, probably going to be a good idea. Uh-oh, Honest Abe making a Bronze League hero mistake. Pro tip of the day. Never get two gas on one base as Zerg under any circumstance ever. Do not do this unless maybe you're cannon contained and you want to do a Baneling Bust or something. I don't even think that's worth it, to be completely honest. But anyways, the drone right now is going to be scouting the main base. He's got to see everything, but in Bronze League Heroes, it doesn't matter if you scout because you still have no idea what they're going to do. So we'll just sit back, see if this scout actually pays off. Look at this. Look at the tenacity of this guy. One pylon, two gateways into an expansion, into another pylon with no gas started until just now past the four minute mark. Honest Abe, again, there's no reason for double gas here if you're just gonna have two drones in the gas. We do have the expansion though, going down for Honest Abe, and he says, you know what? <laughs> which is screw overlords in overlord, as he does not have another overlord on the way, which is fine. We are okay with that. David, I know we started TGS together, but you've got to stop calling me, man. All right, so we do have the three gateways on the way. And you know what? Screw Cybernetics Cores, as he is going to be chrono boosting out regular Zealots with no Warp Gate technologies. Might be able to use these to put on a little bit of pressure right now as Honest Abe, he's got the Roach Warren down. Should be able to deal with this quite easily if he decides to go for the Roach Warren uh, and actually make Roaches on the back. That plus Zergling speed on the way, so if he actually makes some units here, he should be okay. Uh, the drone right now going to be scouting out as well. The drone has seen everything he does know about the three gateways. I almost called them warp gates, but they are not warp gates right now, just regular gateways. So we're going to have a one, uh, two gate into expansion, into a pylon, into a third gate, into gas, which has no probes in it until just now, which took two minutes. Two minutes to get those probes in that gas, but that's fine. We do have the Zelt's going to be moving out right now to the bottom right side. We'll see if he can manage to actually pull this off as, uh, unfortunately, Honest Abe, let's be honest with Abe here. He doesn't have a whole lot of defense. But um, And the puns have ran out. All right, so we do see the uh, expansion right now. Going to be under fire here. A queen will be able to spawn, but he's probably going to end up losing that right away. Spinecrawler is going to go down. The hatchery is under siege. The queen is here. Looks like the Zealots have already started focusing down the hatchery itself. So the queen, oh, uh, got to run it back home. So at least he's going to be able to save that queen for now. The hatchery is going to go down shockingly fast. This is blisteringly fast right now. Now, all of these gateways are powered by a singular pylon. That's when you know it's good. These pylons over here will start to overlap, though, as those uh, pylons are... Yeah, they will overlap here as the gateways are placed further south. More zealots are going to be on the way. My god, I feel like we're watching beta when there was zealots versus roaches all day, every day. Now, don't count out Honest Abe just yet. He's sitting back on his one base. He's got his spines. He's got his queens. And he's got enough links to actually hold this up. Does manage to clean that one out right now as the Zealots here are going to be uh, kind of gathering up down here. I love how there's basically just a rally point set down there. Uh, or actually the rally point set right here and he's individually sending those Zealots down once he decides to. But uh, Zelts right now, he's got five Zelts. That's not going to be enough here to kill Honest Abe unless Honest Abe makes some sort of ridiculous mistake. But <laughs> let's be honest, has Abe made any mistakes this game so far? No. No, there's no mistakes that have been made here by Honest Abe, as uh, he does now have two drones in either gas. He is going to be working on the layer tech right now. Could be for Hydralis, could be quite effective there. Ling's right there, though. Look at that. He's got top three Ling control. Look at that, keeping those Lings alive. I'm um, going to be kiting the Zelts into the main base. He's not going to be able to pull it off just yet. What he really needs, though, is some roaches. I do have to hand it to Mosasaurus, though, for getting a cybernetics core at eight and a half minutes. He's got a decent economy, actually, and he's macroing quite well. I got to give it to him, man. 33 probes to the 20 of our Zerg. Uh, and at least he's doing that over uh, pretty well. <laughs> we do have the overlords over here. I was going to say, oh my god, he has so many overlords and yet is still supply blocks. I think this is every single overlord in the game. In fact, it is. Those are, that is every single overlord. The roaches are here to be able to deal with those zelts. And look at that. He's got some micro right there, keeping those lings alive. He does get the surround on the zelts finally, though. Got to use the roaches to finish the job. But does he decide to use the rest of his money? That's going to be the real question right now. More Zealots are on the way. Somebody tell Mosasaurus that he is not playing mono battles. He can actually make 
uh, more than one unit. He can also get Warp Gate technology. He's not sure if he's aware of that, but the three Roaches and the Ling's going to be moving out across the map. The Zealot's going to continue this pressure. Now, there is four Spines here, which should be more than enough to actually hold this up, but these the Zerg units have been scared back to the main base. He Whoa, that board drone! What are you doing? That's not going to happen. There are lots of Ling's, though. Lots of Roaches. Actually going to be able to kill this off quite cost-effectively, I do believe. Taking a look at the U.S. lost overall, yes, he is going to destroy that Zealot army, but guess what? More Zealots on the way! What is it with uh, Bronze League players and just throwing Zealots to their deaths? I gotta say, uh, Bronze League Zealots, if you are, if you ever find yourself as a Zealot, you wake up one day and you're a Zealot, and you spawn in a Bronze League level game, just get out. Get out of that game immediately because you're going to be sacrificed to your opponent over and over again. It looks like these Zerglings and Roaches just go into town, going to be cleaning up these outs. Four kills on one of those Roaches, by the way, and those are all going to be Zealot kills. That is it. No probes, nothing like that. And it looks like the onslaught is going to continue. However, Honest Abe has moved out of his base. He has managed to take an expansion now. Oh my god, look at this base. It is just a bunch of gateways with no warp gate on the way. Pro tip of the day. Get warp gate. It's like the best ability in the game. But screw that, man, because Mosasaurus, that would slow down his zealot production. And he says, no way, no how as he does have those units on the way. It does look like the uh, the Zelts are actually going to get taken out here as they continue just to reinforce southward, uh, Southly. I kind of feel like this is just a really bad version of Oregon Trail, and unfortunately, you are never going to make it to Oregon, man. The, the promised land of Zerg creep is never going to be yours as uh, you're just going to get intercepted by these native Zergling roaches right here, and it is going to be deadly. Still more roaches on the way, or excuse me, more, uh, more Zealots on the way here. These roaches have got so many kills. Seven kills on that roach right now. One kill and uh, three kills on that one. Oh, God, I got hair in my mouth. No, it's not a pube. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are disgusting. All right, so it does look like right now the Zerg player is going to be returning the favor here, taking out lots of probes. This is actually exactly what he needed here. Now, there is a third base already down at the 12-minute mark. I got to say, Mosasaurus, man, actually macros pretty well for being in Silver League. But unfortunately, he does not have warp gates. Uh, doesn't quite know how to do it. Come on, hair. Get out of my mouth. What is going on here? Hang on. All right. Uh, nope. It's still there. There we go. I got the hair out of my mouth. That's what she said. Now, we do have the roaches and zerglings here still alive. These roaches up to nine kills. That one's a predator. This one is a ravager. He has been promoted three times, I believe. All right. At least is uh, about to be here. He's got 12 kills right there. And I got to say, he's actually pushed the Protoss player back into his main base. More Zelter on the way. Uh-oh, though. We got plus one, plus one on the way. Still no sign of warp gate, but we do have zealot legs which means these couple of roaches right here with 13 kills. We'll see if he manages to win the kill count. 13 kills on that roach right there. We do have more roaches on the way, though. Does he have enough to take these out? Have the Zelts activated their charge? Yes, they have, but they will continue to chase this army down. No, they decide to turn back around. More Zelts being produced. I believe that is the only thing he has produced. I don't even know why he's mining gas at this point. I guess the upgrades are nice, and uh, he is actually going to be working on the plus two attack right now. It looks like the third base, though, could be very vulnerable here as the roach is going to be doing lots of damage. But here comes the Zelts right now. They're going to get the charge off. Can the roaches get away? I can't believe it. It's still going to be lots of Zelts. I'm running out of air. I should probably breathe right now. <gasps> All right. So it does look like the natural for Honest Abe is going to be up, uh, and he's going to be going for the double gas right now. What he really needs, though, is some workers. Yes, he's got the roaches. Yes, he's got the spire. But does he have the economy to back it up? How many workers was he actually able to kill there? 17 workers. Not bad for a counterattack. But uh, I got to say, Mosasaurus continuing with the Chronos on the gateways. I don't think I've ever called them gateways at the 15-minute mark, bringing down the spines right now. So this game is going to be transitioning into what I guess I could consider the mid-game at this point. Oh, Baneling speed on the way. We'll see if Banelings actually play a role in this game. Four Banelings going to be produced right now. Now, I have a feeling that Mosasaurus is not going to have a very good answer for Baneling Muta. Think about it. Zealots is going to get owned by the Banelings, and Mutalisks cannot be hit by uh, by Zealots. Oh, the Zealots is going to absorb all the Banelings! <laughs> Every single Baneling there except for one. That Zealot's like, well, Husky, you say there's no counter to Banelings? Well, I'll just send in one Zealot and he'll eat all of them. So that one Baneling, oh, guys, he, what is this Baneling doing? He's just all by himself, man. He don't even care. He's like, Husky, I'm waiting for Baneling speed. I'm going to be rolling around. I'm going to look awesome. You'll see. 
You'll see I have aspirations to be the best Baneling that ever lived. He finally does decide to waddle back over here, though, to those roaches. And I got to say, Honest Abe decides not to make any workers, workers, schmurkers. But I got to say, Mutilus is going to be pretty good in this situation. We do have a couple more Banelings going to be on the way. So I think Honest Abe has the answer. Not only is he going to uh, end slavery, he is also going to be able to kill a bunch of zealots here. So Honest Abe, we are all counting on you. Do not let us down. Unfortunately, that zealot, I think, is going going to start the letting down. Oh, there's the charge and the drone. Nope, charge is too good. That expansion is not going to happen. But Mutilists are on the way. Keep in mind, Mosasaurus, what are you doing? 33 zealots, 52 probes. Oh, he has no anti-air for these mutas right now, though. Two more Mutilists are going to be on the way, and he is moving out. He is pissed. Honest Abe is moving out. I got to say, though, Mosasaurus, he has balls of silver, man, because he's in Silver League. But uh, the fact that he's expanding towards the Zerg, he has no anti-air. He doesn't have warp gates, and he hasn't made a single thing other than almost fully upgrades. Else, here he goes. The Banelink's not in position. They do get some nice hits there. Finally, though, the Mutilists not able to help out just yet. The Roach is here are bumping into each other. This might actually be enough Zealots here to clean this up. Keep in mind that the Roaches have no upgrades. The Zealots here trying their best to deal with it, but unfortunately they don't have the cool shades. Oh my god, they actually are going to kill all the Roaches. All the Roaches have been killed! The counter to Roach Muta is officially Zealots. You've seen it here as the Zealots are going to continue marching forward. The Spines will be able to clean this up, but uh, I think the Onslaught's just going to continue like this. The 2-2 two, two upgrades are done. We actually have a well-timed plus three attack here. Going to be finishing up here pretty darn soon. The gas in the main base still has not been taken. That is a fresh Vespine geyser. One cannon at each base going down. The Mutilists, though, their count is starting to get higher and higher. The drone count not looking the worst we've seen for Honest A, but the Zealots are going to be forcing these Mutilists back to the main base. And you got to remember also that the armor upgrade is going to be keeping them alive for an extended period of time. The Mutilists flock, though, starting to get mighty terrifying. Plus one attack is on the way. That's just going to help him even more. But you got to remember that with no attacking units on the ground, the Zealots will just go straight for the drones which is actually going to be hurting him here. And the Mutilus can never leave the base. We have more Zelda streaming dinner. Look at the minimap for just one second. We have units nonstop streaming down to the Zerg player's base. He still cannot leave. There's another Zealot. This is going to be ridiculous. Sacrificing so many Zealots here. Look at how far behind he is in the units lost tab. He don't care, though, because he's keeping the Zerg player in his base, even though there's no anti-air whatsoever. But, man, is this Vespin geyser guarded or what? So if he ever decides to take that, you guys just wait. He is actually powering this entire build off of one Vespine Geyser. He's still working on the upgrades. Just finished the plus three attack. We'll see if he actually manages to get out the plus three armor. But this is going to be still non-stop zealous. Not even a single stalker to deal with the Mutas. I think the Mutas will be able to kill off this Nexus and a couple of probes, which is going to help slow down that income. But man, he's got an uphill battle ahead of him. But it's an uphill battle with no anti-air. So really is that much of an uphill battle. That's like doing an uphill battle like when you can fly, where hills don't really matter. This is going to be a lot of dead probes. No, go for the probes! Where are you going? There's so many juicy probes there. The Zealots are so far away. He wants to chase down the Zealots, though. Well, that's fine, Honest Abe. Whatever you want to do, bro. We fully support you here in Bronze League Heroes. I'm seriously spinning all over my monitor. It does. Oh, with the Gosu split. Going to be splitting up these Zealots. The Mutilists aren't sure which way to go. The Hatchery. He might actually lose his third base right now. There's something happening out here as well. Oh, the Natural. It looks like the Zealots going to be doing lots of damage. The Hatchery goes down as well. The Mutilists cannot keep up no matter how much they try. The Zealots just never, ever end. It does lay this base over here, though, really helping him on the income. There's so many mutas, though. If he can just get them into a good position, he will actually be able to win this game. More Zealots going to be streaming down here nonstop. Take a look at the units lost. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5,000 resources behind in the units lost. Army spending. Take a look at this. Almost double at this rate if he keeps going. As uh, it does look at those zealots kind of get cleaned up as well. All right, the Mutilists are going to get a little bit of a breather right now. Keep in mind this natural is completely undefended. Honest Abe says, stop. What are you doing, Mosasaurus? As he's just continuing to send those zealots down. Our Protoss player is up to five bases still. Not a single unit that can shoot air. Mosasaurus' macro is, like, actually really good. He's still spending all of his money. His production is at seven zealots at a time. He doesn't even have that many queued up in this base, man. He has this build down to a science. It's a very special science. It's about as accurate as Scientology. 
but it is still a science nonetheless. It does look like these probes will all get taken out, but look at the minimap, a three-pronged attack, which are all going to be meeting at the exact same location. Three attack, two armor. We do have the three armor on the way, and uh, all of a sudden this main base Take a look at Honest Abe's base. He doesn't have a whole lot. There's no defenses left here. The Muto's got to be able to clean this up. He might end up losing that hatchery, though. Oh, with the Gosu split. Got to be going for the main base right now. I honestly think sacrificing the lair and saving the natural would have been the better choice, but that's fine because it's Bronze League Heroes. And uh, I got to say, pro tip of the day, just make all zealots. Who needs air units anyway? As we do see these Mutalists right now still flying around. He has so many Mutalists. He's got 25 Mutalists. Anyone could win a game with 25 Mutalists at this point. The drone's trying to get out of there, though, because they have no base to mine at. They oh, he's got to be careful with the drones. I think it's the last of his drones. Uh, taking a look right now. He's down to five drones. Actually, he does manage to hide a base down the bottom left side. I think a probe is it, it has caught the scent of the base. No, it has been misled as uh, it is going to be going to the other side. So I think at this point, the Mutalists have just got to stop killing Zealots and kill the main base. Kill the main base! There's still no cannons here. There's only like two pylons powering all of these gateways. And uh, this base over here is rather vulnerable as well as this one. Oh, the double Stargate! I think he's still going to be powering that off of one gas, by the way. One gas, which is almost mined out. If he makes air units off of this one gas, I am going to just die of laughter. We do see the Mutalist going to be moving out. Does he buy the bait? Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. He is going to go for the main base right now. The Zelts down here, though, may have caught wind of what's going on. The base down the bottom left side. Oh my god, does he not have enough money for drones? No, the drones are buying the gas! He's got to mine minerals here to get his economy back on track. At this point, he's saying, you know what, screw the economy. He's actually going to go straight for the pylons. The smartest thing Honest Abe has done all game will actually be unpowering these gateways now. So the onslaught of Zealots has stopped and we have the first gas units on the way, everybody! A round of applause! Round of applause for Mosasaurus here as he has managed to take his second gas at the 26 minute mark. But it does look like the main base is going to get taken out. He might get supply blocked if he keeps losing all these pylons. The Zelt's going to be going into the main base. Still not a single unit that can attack air. No wait, the Void Rays are here. Two Void Rays going to be on the field right now. The Muta is finally going to be going to town. I believe every single Mutalisk is shooting. It is just going to take him a while to actually kill this base. But uh, what he really needs to do is go for the expansions. But I feel like Honest Abe has got a shot right now. Look at this. 20,000 resources lost to a mere 9,000 after losing that lair tech as well. Although, if he doesn't keep any of his drones alive, he's not going to be able to make anything. Oh, God, did he lose all of his drones? He lost all of his drones! He can't make any more drones! All right, so that economy is now stifled. Another base down for Honest Abe. But what do you do at this point? Actually, wait. Wait, wait. He can still win this. If he flies over here and kills this base right now, all he has to do is... Oh, actually, I don't know about this because he can't. I was going to say all he has to do is re-macro up, but I don't think that's going to happen. He found another base down here. Got to go straight for the Nexus. Looks like he killed off the probes right here, which are long-distance mining. Those poor, poor chaps. How is this guy staying alive? How is the bounce damage not killing him? I honestly don't know, but now he's dead anyway, so it don't matter none. But we do have the Mutalist going to be swooping down here. Now, if he can actually move down, if he can kill off these Zelts down here before they find the hidden base, he does stand a chance. Can he do it? Can he actually make it happen? Or is Zealot going to be the official counter to the Derpy Mutalist? There he goes right there, right on top of the Zealots. They do split up. They frantically run everywhere. It's actually going to make it a pain in the butt to kill these off. The Mutalist is going to try and clean this up. The supply advantage still for Protoss, but he's losing all of his Zealots right now. I don't even know if they're going to be able to make it to the other base. Has the other base even been spotted? That's the real question. Let's take a look right now. Take a look at the Zelts. Do they spot the base? They don't know about the base. They tried to spot the base, but the base remains hidden. He has taken out all the Zelts, so now he can go for the main base kill. He can actually kill this head on. Can he manage to intercept the Void Rays? Oh, the Void Rays are moving out. They're going to be moving out to the bottom left side. This is a very tense moment because there's enough Mutalists to kill off everything, but they've got to intercept the Void Rays as the uh, the time is looming as the, uh, the Void Rays right here are hunting for those Mutalists. That's actually going to be the incorrect choice. Takes out a pylon right here. Still has enough to kill everything on the map. Might be going for more pylons here. He is indeed going to do it. Does he know about the other base, though? No, he doesn't. He doesn't know about the other base. He thinks that this is the only thing on the map. The Void Ray is going to be moving out to the God knows where to the bottom right side. They are going to be hunting for the base right now, so both players do not know about the hidden bases. Although, all of a sudden, he has spotted the Void Rays, I believe. The Mutalist is going to be flying in. They spot the base right now. They're going to be able to kill off everything here. This is not enough cannons to defend. This is going to be one of the most ridiculous 
base races ever. It's not even really a base race when you think about it, but we do see the Mutants here. Got to be able to take out this entire base. Don't run from the Void Ray. You can kill the Void Ray. He does manage to get it right here. He's got to kill off the cannons. He can kill off all the probes. The production has been cut down to absolutely nothing. Production shows just one Void Ray, but he's supply blocked. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's lost enough, lost enough probes that he can get it out, but it does look like the pylon going to be going down, but keep an eye on these Void Rays. They are on the hunt. They are on the hunt for the very last building. Can they actually find it? The main base is done. All the mutants have to do is fall back and kill the Void Rays. I think he's going to be okay here as he is going to be killing off the uh, Nexus right now. He's got so many mutilists. He's got a huge supply lead. He's got a huge units loss lead. 27,000 units lost to 10,000. But the Void Rays have spotted the base. Does he use the prismatic alignment? Does he push the button right here? It looks like the hatchery is under fire. The mutilists have turned around to kill a probe. No, they've killed a probe. What are you doing? I think it's the last building. Please tell me it's not the last building. It's the last building. That's got to be it. And he is defeated by the four hero Void Rays. The Void Rays are like, what was the big deal, Zealots? That was really, really easy. Oh my god, look at the army supply, 56 to 26, uh, uh, worker supply, 9 to 0, Honest Abe, oh, what have you done, Honest Abe, these are the shameful, shameful mutilisks right here, they may have a million kills apiece, let's take a look at how many kills they do have, 6, 10, 4, 1, 4, 4, uh, 5, 10, 8, they have so many kills, 10 kills on that one too, uh, 11 kills, I think that's one of the highest ones, 11 kills, so many mutalists, uh out and so many kills, I don't think he lost a single muta that entire time, let's take a look here. No, he actually just gained more Mutalists over the 28. The Mutalists have no damage on them, and he lost to four Void Rays. Uh, mistakes were made, tears were shed, blood was also shed, but either way, what an absolutely hilarious game. That is why we love Bronze League Heroes. If you would like to submit your replays, huskyreplays at gmail.com. Oh, special thanks to Sinvicta for swearing through my replays. His link's down below. Go check him out. He's a good guy. He just got in Masters League. What a hero. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to go cry. Hello everyone, this is HTS Guest here back with some more Bronze League Heroes. That is right, it is time to cast the best of the worst. This time it's going to be between Ghoulishy down in the bottom left side, and his opponent up on the top right side is going to be Novocaine from the coveted Northeast Nugget Town. Uh, I'm assuming that's short for Knights, Nebraska Knights maybe? That's, uh, we're, we're going to assume it's the Nebraska Knights clan, so it is going to be a TVZ, which I gotta say, watching Bronze Leaguers play as Terran, and then especially in this matchup, always gets me giddy, always gets me happy, and, uh, yeah. I, I don't really know what else to say here about Bronze League Heroes, other than make sure to submit your replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend Invicta is the one who sorts through them. He actually live streams the sorting process, so if you want to see even more games in times 8 speed than you've ever seen in your entire life, uh, definitely go check that out. But regardless, we are going to be having Supply Depot first here, which you may say Husky, obviously where he's going to go Supply Depot first, but you got to remember in Bronze League Heroes, there are no rules. No rules whatsoever. You never know exactly what's going to happen. It could be a double gas opener first. It don't matter. But the whole point of this series is to encourage everyone to get out there, play some ladder. If you don't own the game yet, you are missing out. The entire purpose of Bronze League Heroes, as well as Ladder Anxiety, is to encourage more people to play. Because the more people playing StarCraft 2, the better life is for everybody. Because StarCraft 2 is, of course, the best game ever made. Don't tell anyone that I said that. Actually, tell everyone that I said that, because it's freaking true. But anyways, we are going to be having a uh, pretty... Normal-ish build, surprisingly. I don't know, McCain. He does have a supply depot going down. Oh, no, excuse me. A spawning pool. Then the hatchery is going to be going down. Sometimes my mind just combines like eight sentences together, but that's fine. That's fine. Not like knowing how to talk is a very important skill for a commentator or something. But speaking of important skills, it is time for the double proxy racks because why the hell not? It is Bronze League Heroes. That's why, oh, following it up with a double supply depot, I see. You feisty, feisty Terran. Don't want to be scouted out now, do you? Novocaine, though, is going to have no idea about this as the uh, hatchery right here, it doesn't see a whole lot. The Overlord does spot it, though. 
That means, oh my god, there's a bunker on the way. Prepare the defenses. It does look like the hatchery right here may have to be canceled because no drones are pulled off the line. We do have Zerglings in production. I just don't know if they're actually going to be in time here to cancel out this bunker. I don't think they're going to be. He should have sent the drones a long time ago. But guess what? The Overlord here might get taken out as well. Are the Zerglings even going to be able to save this? Doesn't look like they're going to be able to stop the bunker. That Marine can easily get inside. He does. He is now inside his safe new home. I don't think six links is going to be enough here to kill off one bunker, especially with the SCG repairing. Another Marine going to be hopping inside there. He's like, is this scene taken? Another Marine's like, no, we're here to kill a bunch of Zerg. Looks like the hatchery is forced to be canceled. Almost every, oh, every single link does go down. And uh, that's going to be a big loss. Oh, my God. I think even the Overlord's going to die to the bunker. <laughs> That's the Overlord dying sound. That's the official Overlord dying sound, by the way. Blizzard was going to put it in the game, but they just wouldn't let me, actually. So I'm kind of sad about that. But regardless, two more bunkers going to be uh, established here. I assume he's going to throw down another one after this. He's already got the two started. He has another SCB here. Oh, God, he's so going to build another bunker, isn't he? Throw down another bunker. There we go right there. We are going to be having a spine crawler on the way. Now, I would actually recommend doing uh, pretty much what Novocaine did. He didn't have enough to cancel the hatchery. Oh, look at this SCV love song. In the rear with the gear. That is what we're witnessing right there, right now. And, nope, oh, there they go. We're going to be repairing each other there like the cute couple they are. Spine crawler right there. This is basically what I would recommend doing. Doing that and then either researching Overlord drops so you can expand over here undetected, going for a Nidus Worm, or going for some sort of bust, whether it's going to be roaches, whether it's going to be banelings, it doesn't really matter. But three bunkers is kind of a pain in the neck. We do have an expansion for Ghoulishy going down. I got to say, I love the names of Bronze League Heroes. That's always my favorite part. Ghoulishy versus Novocaine, which just sounds badass. Sounds like a, like a pro wrestling duo, tag team duo, man. But anyways, the three bunkers got to be established there. They are just hanging on out. And we do have the commands are actually going down. I, I'm so proud of you, Ghoulishy, actually expanding. Wait, this is going to be the telltale sign. Does he have an orbital? Yes, he does! Woo! All right, guys, you are learning how to be good at video games right here, right now. So he did get the orbital command, did not skimp on it. Something he has skimped on, though, is going to be that worker count. But when you're being this aggressive with your proxy cheese, this is what happens. Creep we're going down as well. I actually like the decision-making here by both players-ish. I think Novocaine's kind of in a tough spot, and our Terran player needs to make sure to keep making workers because you don't want to just be making Marines all the way throughout the entire game. As good as it sounds, we've seen how big of a disaster that can actually be. Now, Creep is going to slowly start working its way down the ramp. I do believe that a spine crawler on the high ground can actually spot the one bunker and uh, be able to reach it there to stretch Armstrongness and be able to poke that bunker down. And uh, more Marines on the way here. So he's just going to continue that Marine production. A second orbital command. Oh, my God. You know, after watching so many Bronze League heroes, I feel like someone who gets a second orbital command should already be in Master League because so many Bronze League players never get their orbital commands. Remember, guys, pro tip of the day, always go for your orbital commands. And there's a spine crawler up on the high ground. Got to be poking away at this bunker. I don't know if he can even save this bunker. The longer he can set up this contain, though, the better. Even the Roach is getting in on the fun. Going to be able to poke that down as well. It does actually managed to salvage it there. That's another option that a lot of Bronze Leaguers forget about. Get some of that money back as he does salvage out. What? He can actually reach these other bunkers? That's like so long on the pokey arm. Look, why can they stretch that far? I never understood that. Marines right here, they're going to try and break up the ramp. They just don't have enough DPS right now, though, as the bunker's not in range to help out until just now. But unfortunately for Ghoulishy, the uh, the bunkers are taking a lot of damage. You're going to have to salvage this one. This one should be out of range, I think so, anyway. But the Marines right there trying to run up the ramp, but they roll back down the hill as a bloodied green glowing corpse, which is never a good thing. SCVs there trying to repair that friend, but they had to watch him to die. That's actually quite traumatizing now that I think about it. But uh, we do have Lair Tech now done. Now, at this point, he can either go for, like, some Roach upgrades. He can go for Mutalisks. He can go for a, uh, a Nidus Worm. Nidus Worm might actually be really good. He does decide to go for the Hydralisk in, though. We'll see if he does go for Hydras or uh, something else to try and break through this. As we do have lots of Overlords on the way, because why the hell not make five Overlords? Because in Bronze League Heroes, you just have so much money at all points in the game. You can make as many Overlords as you want. As uh, Bronze League Heroes is not about macro, it's not about good games, it's about the hilarity that ensues in Bronze League. Spinecrawl here, got to be poking away, continued at the bunker, looks like he finally gives up, is going to go ahead and salvage that. I also do love how both these players, oh, it's pretty funny how bad you are 
boom, roasted right there. Ghoulish is saying, you know what, I know I'm bad. I cannot believe how far this uh, spine crawler could actually stretch. It literally reached all the way down to here. That's barely even on screen for that spine crawler. That spine crawler, I don't care, man. He's going to wear his top hat, his monocle, and going to be a gentleman. Now, uh, Ghoulish, do not throw your epic win away by not making units. He's currently falling way behind in supply, and he does have two reactors on the way, so I'll give him that. Oh, and sometimes my voice just goes so high-pitched and I can't break it. One of these days, guys, I'm going to hit puberty, and that is going to be a ridiculous day. But we do have more Marines inside these bunkers. Roach is going to be moving on down and not able to kill us off. That is a lot of Roaches here. I do believe the Nidus Worm is going. I mean, he has to use the Nidus Worm, right? That's uh, that, that's kind of what normally Bronze and players are going to do. There it is right there. I saw him get the Lair and uh, the Hydralist in with no Hydras. I'm like, all right, he is up to something here. So it is going to be a Nidus Worm. And uh, he does have the Overlord right now. So he can easily deploy that Nidus Worm. But I gotta say, 2,000 minerals from Gulushi. I will say, though, Gulushi is really committed to this proxy. He's like, you know what, Husky? I already lost the two bunkers, man. But I'm gonna go ahead and build two more. And, and absolutely free if you act now you are going to get a free factory that's four bunkers and one factory for the price of two factories call now that was my infomercial voice i don't know i don't know if i have a very bright career in infomercials or not but i should definitely i don't know i should cast this whole game like an infomercial and over here is the layer tech now the layer tech is going to be able to get you through those days do you hate when you wake up and you want to make some eggs but you don't know how invest in the layer tech for a limited time only, you can get the Lair Tech for $19.95. But wait, there's more. If you call within the next 15 minutes, we'll include three drones absolutely free. I don't know what I'm actually talking about. Three, whatever. We do have the nice one right now, though. It is going to be unloading every single roach here. I think every single roach is in there. Um, we have a lot of larvae back at home. No units actually at home, so the one spine call here may have to be enough to defend this main base. I got to say, take a look at the supply discrepancy right now. As the Roach is going to be going inside the main base. Army supply 23 to 59. This is not looking good for Ghoulishy as his units are going to be taking out the uh, poor, poor SC are all going to die, but that is going to command these Marines to attack. Here they go inside the main base, but unfortunately the Roaches can just come right back out of that Nidus Worm and defend the main base. These Marines, though, they're trying to decide, well, is it worth dying? Nobody lives forever. They probably are going to go for it, I would imagine, but what is, what is he doing over here? Three random starboards just going to be easily made Banshees to save his main base. But here we go inside the main base. The spine call is going to get taken out. The Marines got to be marching in there, but the Roaches can just easily go in that Nidus Worm and come back out to save the base. Keep in mind the army value is 20 to 71. The drones are going to be able to escape as well, but they decide to engage the Marines. No, what are you doing, drones? That is a huge, huge mistake. The Roaches right here going to be able to do a little bit of damage. He says LOL, and right now the Roaches are going to get taken. What? No, he left the game. <laughs> <laughs> Novocaine, why did you leave the game? Oh my god, Novocaine actually left the game. No, Novocaine, that's all I have to say. Sweet, sweet Novocaine, you had this game. 57 army supply to only 15 marines. Uh, I think we could have saw a couple of units being produced out of the, uh, the factory here. A couple of widow mines, perhaps. But Novocaine, why would you do that? It's time for the pro tip of the day. If you're about to win a game, don't leave it. I cannot believe Novocaine left. He was so far ahead. Oh, Ghoulishy with the clutch victory here. And this is why we love Bronze League heroes, because ladder points are divvied out to players who sure as hell do not deserve them. So Ghoulishy right there is going to be your victor with his 21 supply to 57. His worker supply 6 to 0 because those drones turned around and attacked for no reason. And uh, this is why, guys, do not see red and do not rage quit. Because that is hilarious. In fact, the title of this game is going to be Rage Quit. Now, also, one thing I want to point out is the range on that spine crawler. Hang on, I want you guys to see this just for a second. If I back it up a little bit and I get rid of the army supplies as well. All right, so I'm going to pause here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to options. I'm going to turn on the sound. We're going to crank this all the way up. And uh, I, don't, I don't, watch your ears, everybody. But just listen to the sound of the spine crawler poking away. All right, here we go, here we go. Oh, God, it's so good. Oh, God.
god, the sound of the poking spine crawler is just so good. I don't know why I find that so funny. But anyways, Novocaine, th this may be why you're in Bronze League. That's all I'm saying. I'm pro tip of the day. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wait. Don't leave a game until you lose your very last unit. That's a rule I'm setting for everyone. Because sometimes the comebacks can be absolutely hilarious. But anyways, that's why we love Bronze League Heroes. You can send your replays at huskyreplays at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone, who's been subscribing lately. By the way, BT Dubs, you guys are great. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HTS Husky here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes. Oh, God, that's so fun to say. It throws my voice out right from the start. But let's go ahead and introduce our players down in the bottom right side. It is going to be Teleport which is something that uh, stalkers can do, and when you warp in units, it's technically teleporting, so that's a very fitting name. And up at the top left side, it is going to be Zevin, or as I like to say, Zevon. Zevon sounds so much more fancy and French or something. Zevon, wee oui, wee, oui, I don't know, but we're going to be going with Zevon, and it is going to be a PBZ. Now, of course, for those of you who do not know, Bronze League Heroes is casting the best of the worst. We get a little bit goofy. The games aren't good. The players aren't good, but my God, is it hilarious. So that is the whole point of Bronze League Heroes. Don't be a butt hurt, Beverly. And also, it looks like we are going to be having a gateway first out of Teleport, which I got to be honest, I, as Protoss, hate Forge Fast Expanding versus Zerg. This is my own personal preference. I do prefer to go for the earlier gateway, although Zergs are really, really good at uh, denying those. So not highly recommended, but hey, well, I get to play my StarCraft however I want. But we do have uh, a lot of drones on the way for Zavon, so it's not going to be any cheese out of either of these players, actually. We do have the fancy little pylon skin over here. Uh, Pylo Man getting his new dubs looking phenomenal. I gotta say, I actually just unlocked the pylon skin on my account. Feeling pretty good about it. No big deal, guys. I'm level 20 Protoss, which you can actually get just by playing versus AI, uh, by the way. So nothing really to brag about there. Is this actually going to be a hatchery first build? It's okay because it's Bronze League Heroes and uh, Protoss don't know about blocking hatcheries. So it is going to be a hatchery first build here out of Zevon Wee Wee and uh, actually manages to get away with it. Now, does the probe realize that some shenanigans is going on? He has to. He is going to go ahead and bring that back. Now, I do want to say, I, uh, I, God, did I talk about this already? This is uh, Bronze League Heroes points to cast the best of the worst. The games aren't good. The players aren't good. But my God, is it hilarious? Did I already say that? I totally forget, guys, because I've been casting a lot of these games back to back. But a big shout out to my friend Invicta. He's the one who sorts through all the replays. Got his link down below. Sometimes he does live stream the, uh, the sorting process as well. But regardless, we do have the hatchery down, the probe there. He is so determined to kill this hatchery. I always wonder what the hell this thing is swimming around in the middle. Like, is that the drone? Is that what that is? He just swims around and then he immediately erupts into a building. Uh, this probe, though, has got a lot of work ahead of him, let me tell you. There's another probe over here. Going to be scouting out the Overlord. <laughs> as he does see everything that's going on. Now, I'm kind of going to see how much damage this probe actually does to the hatchery. I imagine it's not going to be all that much, but if the probe did kill the hatchery, that would be the best. Looks like a, uh, a drone up here is actually going to be for <laughs> Casting is hard. The drone is going to be preventing the probe from killing hatchery. Oh my god, this drone might actually get a kill. Oh god, saves the probe in the last second. We almost had first blood before there was actually any attacking units on the field. We do have double queens on the way. Look at Zavon going for a pretty good opener here. I would actually highly re recommend doing what Zavon's doing, except not versus Protoss, because if they're any good, they're going to be blocking the hell out of you. So I'm kind of curious to see exactly what our Protoss player has planned, because currently it's not a whole lot. Although he does have, uh, if he gets a Stalker out right away, if he goes for a Stalker, everyone sing the Stalker song. Got to get the Stalker. He could have killed two Overlords, but he missed his chance. Okay, that's like a... a kids song there but uh, anyways I guess he's not gonna be going for the stalker here because who wants two free overlord kills I mean really he's actually a pacifist I gotta say that's very honorable of him there is one stalker now on the way two two apparently there's two probes out here just got to be scouting out together these were inseparable these two probes always falling in love getting in trouble and uh, having a sweet sweet romance apparently in the middle of the map not quite sure what was up with that we do have a mothership core on the way and our Protoss player, man, he is not going to get supply blocked anytime soon. He is just throwing down pylons everywhere. As he has two out in the center of the map, he's going to be adding on some gateways right now. What else does he have planned? Oh, it's going to be a four gate. Four gate. Got to get that four gate. No, I've already done a parody of that song. I can't, I can't do it with another one, guys. I just don't have it in me. 
Looks like the Overlord right here will get shot a couple of times. If the Stalker decides to chase it down, will be able to kill it. Now, interestingly enough, Zevon is going to be going for five Roaches. Now, I don't know if he's going to be aggressive with this, if he's going to use them for defense, but uh, we are actually going to be having a low-tier early uh, Bronze League Heroes game here. Who would have thought a low-tier uh, Bronze League Heroes game? That is kind of why I actually love this game. Because, you know what? Screw getting actual good units. Let's just stick to the Tier 1 units, which I'm okay with because it is hilarious. Although Roaches are more like Tier 1.5. Let's be honest. You definitely have to get the uh, spawning pool down first. But we do have more Roaches on the way. Oh, wait. Was he supply blocked that whole time? Is that why those weren't actually building? Uh, no, he does. Okay, he does have Roaches on the field. Where are they at? Where are my Roaches at? Everyone raise your claws. All right, so we do have five uh, Roaches on the field here. Got to be guarding that natural. And uh, that probe actually did some damage here to this hatchery. Three full bars. Most ones that have regenerated since then. But this is going to be a high aggression game. Actually, out of both these players, I'm getting a little bit excited. I only made you guys wait for like five minutes before the action starts. Um, our Protoss player, though, actually doing a good job not getting supply block. He has a lot of units on the field. And here we go. You guys ready for some Bronze League Hero Micro? Because I sure am. Looks like the Mushroom Core right here could throw down a Time Warp to engage those Roaches directly, or he could wait for more reinforcements. Looks like it is going to be the reinforcement route, but he actually needs to warp in those reinforcements. There they are right there. Four Stalkers on the way, plus the one Sentry, plus the Mother's core. Uh, Forgate has never looked so hilarious. Now that, you, now that you can mix in the Mothership core, we'll see if he manages to pull anything off. Does Chrono boost out those warp gates? However, both players know that each other is going for aggression. Is he actually going to march his roaches all the way across the map? Oh my god, he is going to march roaches all the way across the map. And one random drone just kind of hanging out in the middle of nowhere because why the hell not? Why the hell not? Just He's just going to hang out right there, maybe throw down a proxy hatchery. I don't know. I don't know, but it does look like the uh, Stalkers, Zealots, and the one lonely sentry. One is the loneliest number that they'll ever be. That is uh, that is what they say. Now, you have Stalkers up here. Going to be able to take out this expansion. Will be able to kill off the queen and the hatchery itself. Do the drones decide to evacuate? No, they decide to move on in. Oh, my God. He's just going to leave that hatchery. No, the biggest mistake ever of Bronze League Heroes. Oh, if you're just there to kill the base, you might as well do it. But guess what? The roaches here are in the main base of Double. We are going to have the world's fastest base race here, actually. I think this is actually the fastest base race I've ever seen, as we do have both players just going to town inside the main base. More roaches got to be out the way for us. Zivon Wee Wee, as we do have the roaches up here, taking out the cybernetics core first. Could go for the pylons as well. That is exactly what he's going to do. Does he decide to run the probes, though? If he runs the probes, he will be able to build inside the third player's main base. Roaches here trying to do some damage. That is not going to happen, though. The supplies are still relatively even. Down goes the lair tech. Do the broodlings kill off anything? Does not look like it whatsoever. And he needs to go for the buildings as quickly as he possibly can because this is a base race situation. No, he didn't run the probes. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad. He has zero probes. He at least needs to make a probe. He's got 1,700 minerals in the bank. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's not going to make any probes. He doesn't even have time to make probes at this point. 1,700 minerals. And he doesn't have a single probe. All right. Well, that's uh, all the production for Protoss for today. We'll see if he decides to mass. Oh, wait, he can't mass recall. He can't even mass recall to save his life right now. Which he definitely uh, could have done if he had a Nexus. Because he only Master Recall to a Nexus, I believe. Uh, yep. Two targeted Nexus. He cannot do that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Why are you leaving this base? What are you... Uh, is he going to fall back? What, uh, what, uh, at this point, you just have to make primitive grunting noises. That's really all you can do in a cast situation like this. Because the correct decisions, the time to make those has already passed. There is no more time for correct decisions. We do have a couple of pylons on the map right now. Uh, that teleport has that he can easily defend. He has less zealots over here to kill off the hatcheries, but unfortunately he's scouting the wrong way. He is going the wrong way. He doesn't know about the hatchery over here, so can our Zerg player actually pull a clutch win right now? It will kind of make up for the last Bronze League Heroes where he was uh, going to win and then just decided to leave the game. 30 army supply to 28. I want to say this actually favors Protoss if he micros correctly, but I never know what to expect in Bronze League Heroes. But it does look like the one hatchery going to go down. The extractor is going to go down as well. And there's the one lonely roach over here. Seriously, one is the loneliest number that there ever was because he's just going to hang out there. The zealots are like, nah, we'll let him live. There's only a bunch of creep over there anyways. There's definitely no roaches. Oh, a clutch force field, which didn't really do anything but help the roaches. But either way, going to be doing that. And now it is going to be racing around the map. They're trying to kill each other off. There is only one spawning pool and one hatchery on the map. Zavon could easily throw down a spawning pool if he wanted to. Oh, God, the roaches are moving out. Does our Protoss player know about it? Yee 
No, well, kind of. He doesn't know exactly where they are, but he does know they're on the move. Six drones. Look at that. Actually using that larva. That was pretty sick. I will hand that to him as this army is going to be moving back to defend the last pylon. This is once again Pylo reincarnated. Oh, he's on the move command. No, why the move command? Both players were on the move command. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen both players on the move command just waltzing right by each other. But it looks like Teleport will be able to do it. He is going to clean out these roaches. He is GTG, also known as good to go. But what he's got to do is go over here and kill this main base before the spawning pool gets thrown down, uh, which it is on the way right now. A couple Zerglings running past him could end his life. It could wreck his world. Now, you do have the one Stalker going to be moving out here to kill this poor little drone. Now, fortunately for Teleport, he still has not scouted these three locations. He doesn't know exactly where they are. Did manage to kill off an Overlord, which doesn't really matter at this point because, my God, has he got lots of supply to spare. But uh, the one stalker over here is like, don't worry, guys. I got this spawning pool, which is over here at the natural. Was that his original spawning pool, or did he build another spawning pool over there? Either way, there's going to be the spawning pool at the new main base located on the right side. One spine floor goes down. Oh my god, this army seriously just sits around here all day. This is going to be, this is going to be bad. I got to say, Teleport, normally what we would say is if you're far ahead, just take your time and get more far ahead. But at a situation like this, I think it's dire. It is of dire importance to actually attack your opponent. But he still has a huge army supply advantage. It is 22 to 4 here, uh, which means he has two roaches. Teleport saying, where are you? Unfortunately, he's going to be scouting. You guys think my scouting is uh, unfortunate. This one stalker is like, all right, I'm going to find him. I'm going to find him, man. And he eventually will. Unfortunately, it's going to be going in the wrong direction. The Overlord over here, got to be scouting out this last pylon, wants to see, is that army in position? Is it guarding that last pylon? It looks like the Stalker here might be able to take it out. Nope, the Overlord is going to go ahead and scoot on back. Where is this hero roach, though? He is just hanging out over here, shaking off like a little dog. So this is the one roach, man. The he roach. Get it? He roach? Oh, God. I'm sorry, guys. Just go ahead and close your browser right now and go look at porn or something, because that was bad. We do have the Stalker over here, though, has found the main base. It is going to be able to kill off the spike call. Now, remember, the golden rule of Bronze League heroes. Put your Stalker behind the mineral line. We never, ever see that used effectively here. Even the spawning pool blocking off the gas here, and the Stalker does manage to escape if you could call it that, although there's only one stalker left for the defense of this singular pylon as Teleport is on the move. He is ready to go. Army supply still 22 to 4. Four goes into 22 several times over. The one roach, the one queen is the other supply. He's going to be injecting larva. There are two more spine claws on the way, but the army is on the move right now, and this stalker over here should be able to hold his own versus one roach, I believe. I'm actually not sure. Don't hold, don't, uh, don't hold me to that. But we do see this army right now going to be engaging. He focus fires here. He should be able to clean out the remainder of this. There is a roach horn on the way, but the zealots have died immediately. Are we going to be seeing the militia core use anything effective? Looks like so far the answer is no. Spine cars have gone down though. Does time warp on the drones? Well, I mean, whatever floats your boat, man. The drones are pulled off the line. He's trying to get the spine crawl here. Can the drones actually kill off these stalkers? I'm actually not sure. It does look like the roach now has moved over. Can he actually kill off the stalker? It is going to be the battle of the century. The he roach right now trying to take out the stalker. Oh my god, I think the roach is actually going to do it. Can he do it? It's so close. They're both in the red. One more shot apiece, and it looks like 6 HP on the roach. He's going to be working on killing down that pylon. A couple zerglings have spawned, though. He can make another zergling if he tries. The four stalkers over here trying to go for the drones, but oh my god, the one roach over here is slowly hacking away at this pylon. Can he actually get it though? He attacks so slow. Can the heat roach actually manage to do it? This is the most epic battle of all time. Take a look at the structures tab. This is the only structure for Protoss in the game. It's getting dangerously low. Oh my god. Oh my god. Teleport might actually throw this game away. I don't think he can do it. He's very upset with himself. He didn't fall back to protect it. The heat roach with 8 HP is going to win it for him. There he goes. And down goes the pylon. Zavon's Roach, the he roach right there, is like, hey man, it ain't no thing. And look at these Zerglings, man. They are just going to town. They're like, hey, 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 hey. like that picture of that horny toad man that's laughing as they are able to kill off those stalkers. Oh, poor Teleport. Poor Teleport never stood a chance. Now, I will say... I do like that Teleport got a Mothership Core, but uh, I don't like most of everything else uh, that he did. Unfortunately, leaving the one Stalker there was not enough. The Heroach over here able to take it out. 
But my God, this is why we love Bronze League Heroes. So if you uh, want to submit your games, submit them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. They'll be sorted through by the very handsome Sinvicta, and we will be casting the very best of the very worst here in Bronze League Heroes. So thank you guys, everyone, who's been subscribing, commenting, liking, whatever you want to do to support the video. You guys are the very breast. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Kowski here back with some more Bronze League Heroes! Oh my god, it has been way too long since I have said those words. I don't know if you guys could tell, but there's a little bit more oomph in my step. Not that I'm walking anywhere, because that would be kind of weird during a cast. But uh, anyways, I'm so glad to be back. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. Up in the top, right, uh, top left side, guys, I'm getting rusty, man. Up in the top left side, it is going to be Bunny Box with an extra X, and down in the bottom right side is going to be Soka Head. Looks like uh, Soka Head saying, have a nice week, and Bunny Box saying, you too. Look at that. Round of applause, everyone. Uh, also, don't have a round of applause for four queued up SCBs, and he's going to be supply blocked here in just a second. So uh, that's actually quite hilarious. And the pylon's going to be going down very late here for Bunny Box, like we were mentioning before. Oh, the wasted Chrono Boost. Oh, we are getting this started off absolutely right, guys. Oh my god, this game is already so bad that I'm so excited about it. And uh, he still has not dropped down a supply depot. There that one goes. Ooh, this is going to be a good game. This is a true Bronze League Heroes double supply depot. Queued up on the same SCV before barracks, before gas, really before anything that you should get other... Oh! Oh god, three supply depots. So uh, anyways, guys, while this game gets underway... Oh my god, are we going to be having a cannon rush? I think we are going to be having a cannon rush, which is absolutely hilarious! Uh, considering that this person is going a triple supply deep opener, it's still the same SCV! Oh god, this, this cannon rush is actually going to be met with, I, normally I would say stiff resistance, but this is kind of flaccid resistance, guys. There's not a whole lot here to deal with this. He is playing ballsy, man. Sokahead gonna be going for the refinery right now. Here comes the cannon rush. The pylon goes down. The forge is nearly done. We're just going to have to wait and see if this actually ends up working out for Bunny Box. As uh, this is the fancy opener we got. We got the Wasted Chrono Boost Cannon Rush opener versus the three Supply Depot into Barracks opener. The probe here is alive. Can he actually drop down a cannon? He's going to try. He's got the one cannon going down. And oh no! Oh no! The probe stuck! The probe stuck! He's actually going to lose the probe! Oh my god! Never have I cannon rushed someone to have them have no defenses whatsoever. And we're talking about no defenses here. And I don't think this cannon's even going to finish. It might get a couple of shots out. This SCB is just admiring the view. This is a true Bronze League Heroes game. Could not be more excited to uh, to be bringing you guys the action. Oh, God, here come four SCVs lining up to kill off the cannon. And to be fair, he did kill off one SCV and a second one as well. Not going to get a third right there, but uh, either way, that cannon rush has been thwarted, if you can really call it that. I think that was more of an epic fail of the day. But uh, anyways, guys, now I can talk for a second. This game got underway much more quickly than I had anticipated. Now, for those of you who follow me on Twitter, number one, we reached 100,000 followers, which is ridiculous. And number two, uh, you guys would know the epic drama, the epic tale of why I haven't been able to upload videos for a week. All right, so I want to recap really quickly so everyone is on the same page. Number one, the awesome Protoss computer. It worked great for a while. It was it was kind of like in the honeymoon period, you know, when you're dating a girl. She's super hot. She's super nice. She is water cooled. I don't know. I don't know what else. But anyways, that one eventually got a little overheated and uh, the water pump went out, which was uh, bad news for me. And I was able to borrow a second ultra super computer. That one died on me just because I have really, really bad luck with computers, apparently. And uh, then I was like, you know what? I'm done borrowing computers. I'm done getting computers from uh, anyone else. I'm going to build my own, right? That's the smart choice. How many SCVs are in here? Four, because why the hell not? It's Bronze League Heroes. Uh, so anyway, so I went through two awesome computers. And then I built my own, got everything hooked up in there. Everything was good. I'm snapping so much more. I don't know if that's a douchey thing or not. But uh, anyways, I uh, um, anyways I built my computer, got it all set up. I turned it on, and it didn't turn on. So I had to spend another whole day taking every single part out. The troubleshooting was a nightmare. I eventually fixed it, and we are here on my new computer. 
Oh, hitting notes that I've never hit before in excitement. We did actually take out the SCV. Very proud of him here. He does finally have two Marines at the six and a half minute mark. We have two Marines and two Zealots. About as even as you can get here in this real nail biter of a game here. What's going to happen next? Are they going to kill their own command center? Are they? Oh my God, is this Nexus too far away from the middles? I, I feel like that Nexus is too far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, am I tripping or is that Nexus too far away? All right, it's time for the pro tip of the day. Just measure out where your Nexus should be. Oh, God, I'm pretty sure that this is too far away. Unless I'm a total jerk hat and just watching so many Bronze League Hero games actually makes me assume that everyone is worse than they actually are. That is a distinct possibility. Now, look at these pylons, man. These, these proxy pylons with warp gates starting at the 7.5 minute mark. Not quite sure what these pylons are for, but I will say, I will give it to Bunny Box. I like that the way he's thinking. He's like, all right, I'm going to establish some center pylon control. I'm going to be able to warp in reinforcements here at about the 20 minute mark. And once my warp gate actually finishes, then I'll be good to go. I like the way he's thinking. The execution could use a little bit of work, but hey, man, that is why we watch Bronze League Heroes. Uh, here in Bronze League Heroes, we watch the best of the worst, and so far this game has already been hilarious. We do have one bunker going down inside the main base. I'm quite proud of Sokahead for not going for a planetary inside the main base and for not lifting off his orbital command center to off-center it there, which is actually something that's quite funny to do. If you think, if, if you're really confident beating one of your friends, uh, say you're like a diamond player and your friends are like lowly bronze, they're they're the lowly bronze, they're like Bronze League Heroes material. One thing you can do to troll them, just lift this off, fly it over here and begin playing as normal. I've done that. Before. What is this? Why would you place a Twilight Council there? <laughs> what are you doing, Bunny Box? All right, I was impressed, and now I am not impressed. I am not impressed by this, Bunny Box, although you are making me laugh. It does look like the Reaper Harass is getting underway. And I gotta say, Soak Ahead, what's his APM up to? 35. Very nice. Gonna get these Reapers up here inside the main base. And uh, we'll be doing a little bit of damage with the pros. Are pulled off the line. No, he's making a mistake and focus firing down one Reaper. You actually want to go on the attack command. Okay, he returned the uh, minerals there. Probes, what are you doing? What are you doing, Probes? You've got to get back to work. This is no time for dilly-dallying. And the Probes are also slowing down those Zealots. But uh, those probes, come on, guys, you can do it. I know you're all shell shocked, but you just got to get back. You got to get back in the game, guys. Come on, probes. Come on, probes. I'm clapping and doing the uh, the stomp like I'm at a hockey game. Come on, probes. You can do it. You can do it. Let's take a look at that fatty income. I love how he's a base up. He's got double the workers, but his income is the same. And it's not. You can't even blame mules this time. It's because oh, there we go. Oh, 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 tra traffic jam. We got a. Uh, it's supposed to be a union job over here, man. Everyone is slacking. Is anybody gonna mine right now? All right. Well, at least he has the decency to put on probes back into the gas. All right. Here we go. Now is his moment of truth. He's got them selected. All right. He's got half of them mining. How we didn't select all of them there is beyond me. He's got half the probes mining. And what is, uh, what's going on? What's going on, probes? Are we going to get back to work or are we just hanging out? I feel like they're just hanging out right now. I don't know if there's any hope for these probes here. But let's get back to the proxy dark shrine. I love how this is more likely to be scouted than in his own main base. It's not even a hidden proxy on the map. It's literally straight up if he decides to take a third base, which I don't think is going to be happening anytime soon. That is going to be scouted by the worker building the command center. Oh, God. I, I don't even want to talk about these probes, guys, because this is just painful to see, except that it's Bronze League Heroes, which makes it so much better. I cannot emphasize that enough. What is with this proxy? I can't even get over this. Uh, well, these DTs are still probably going to be a surprise as Sokahead has not left not left his base. He did cancel an add-on there uh, in lieu of adding on a reactor there. Not sure if that was intentional or not. The two Reapers over here just hanging out. They're like, yeah, this game, this game right here, Billy Bob, I tell you what, is it's something. It is definitely something. Now, right now, I got to say that Bunny Box is somehow in the lead despite... His Nexus, which is not placed correctly, despite his proxy Dark Shrine, which is also not placed right at all. It's over here. All right, guys, ask yourselves as Protoss, if you're proxying a building, just go away from these bones. If you're anywhere near these bones, you're doing it wrong. That is the new official rule. 
Dem Bones. All right, so we do have the Dark Shrine done. One can only assume that there's going to be warped in DTs. All right, so there is going to be one DT moving out right now. Is our Terran player going to have the 13-minute detection? We are about to find out right now. His bunny box is going to be moving on in with that Dark Templar, and he's going to be getting gas to his expansion. Look at him. Look at him being all fancy. Getting, uh, getting three of those going, and the DT right now still hanging out. We have the armory on the way. We have the Im immaculate one base play right now from Soak Ahead. Not quite sure if he's actually able to, to keep up with this Protoss player's macro, though. He's actually way behind in supply right now. So we're just going to have to wait and see. It does look at like the DT's going to move up there. Do we have the, oh, oh, we have quite the standoff here. Does he have enough energy for scan? Oh, you bet your biscuits he does. He has 200 energy on one base. Throw down the scan. Throw down the scan. No, he's going for the turret. No, if only he had a button he could push that would reveal all close units in a certain radius. Oh, God, the DT is going to slip right in there. Soak ahead. I want to give you coaching so bad. And unfortunately, this game has... Oh, my God, did you see that SCP? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What the hell just happened? What was with the physics on that one? There's the scan, but there's no even. <laughs> There's no units there. Oh god, throw down to the scan. Throw down to the scan, Soak Ahead. You can do this. You've got this, Soak Ahead. You've just got to focus. There it is. Round of applause for Soak Ahead. Round of applause. A beautiful cleaning up of that DT. This game is just too much. Here comes the three derpy stalkers trying to run up the ramp. And Soak Ahead's got to hold everybody. Soak, a Soak Ahead has done it. He is living up to his name. Uh, this is for one who holds ramp with vastly superior forces uh, versus three stalkers. It's it, it's a, it's a name, guys. I learned it in English class in the eighth grade. So in English class, I meant history class. Whatever, it's a word, okay? Okay, we're gonna stick with it. Have these workers ever gotten back to work? No, they haven't. No, they have not. All right, let's try and count the idle workers. We got one, two, three. Uh, there's at least three or four in there. I see. No, no, there's one right here. So that's four. And I can't tell if this guy is working or not. Yes, he is. All right, so four idle workers inside the main base. To be fair, the idle worker button is kind of hidden these days. We do have another probe right here, going to be chilling out. But I got to say, man, soak ahead. He is committed to not ever having any workers. And that takes dedication right there. Ten SCVs. I'm not even sure where all these SCVs are. There's one over here. So out of those ten workers, um, three of them are idle. So he's got a good 30% idle worker rate right now, which is quite impressive. That That's that's a first. Um, our Protoss player, though, is trying to catch up in the idle worker count. Um, he's technically leading in the amount of idle workers, but what he's really leading in right now is the supply block. So i got to hand that to him right now. And why the hell not proxy the Templar Archives at the Star <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this is actually like one of my favorite Bronze League heroes. Here comes the Derpy Zealots! No! No, the Bronze League Hero Zealots, they've done it again! They've done it again! I feel like Zealots and Bronze League Heroes are like a special level of special. I, uh, an SLS, a special level of special. Uh, we do have the Terran building armor, so he's all walled in nice and tight. How we can actually afford this much stuff off of no workers, it blows my mind. I don't know if he's got to stand much of a chance versus whatever is surely not going to be coming out of this Stargate. We'll see if he actually manages to make anything out of here. But at this point, okay, so we got we got quite the concoction of units over here. This is a, a mixer party over here. We got the uh, the High Templar. They're a little bit shy, but they're kind of like the smart, nerdy guys. We had the stealthy guy who's going to stab you in the back. We got the fat girl over here who's going to be the Archon. And then we got like the relatively successful, you know, kind of standard office worker zealot. You know, he works his 9 to 5. He makes his 38000 a year, and uh, he's happy with it. Here's all his buddies over here. But we do have quite the army for Protoss, a massive supply lead at this point. And we're just going to have to wait and see if anything else exciting happens. Oh, God. Oh, God. Soak ahead. Going to go for the double medevac. Eight Widow Mine drop. This could actually be devastating uh, to either player, really. You never know in Bronze League Heroes if something is going to work out or not. Um, he is delaying the drop by a, a painful amount of time. Has still not made any more workers. Pro tip of the day. Never stop making workers unless you literally have 100 of them. Now there's going to be the scout on the proxy. More proxy pylons on the way for Buddy Mike. Don't unload here. What are you doing? There's only a pro. This is going to be the biggest overkill on this probe ever. All right, there you go. 
Good job, Soak Ahead. I hope you're proud of yourself. Now, unfortunately, Widow Mines do not attack buildings, so this drop, this drop was the most awkward drop I have ever seen in my entire life. Oh, there's the DTs. Does he decide to scan? Something tells me he doesn't realize that they're there. Now, also, I think that these players don't realize that they currently can Oh, there's a scan, and he does it. Was there splash damage on the Widow Mines? No, no splash damage on Widow Mines. Good to know. Good to know, guys, unless he lost the Widow Mine there, which he did not. So here, move the eight Widow Mines is don't burrow them there. Whatever you do, do not burrow them there. Please do not burrow your way. What's going on down here? Looks like the Siege Tank's getting a little bit feisty. Widow Mines, here we go. The Widow Mines are going to attack. Unfortunately, there is cannons here. We'll see if his micro is going to be top notch. Oh, no! No, what are you doing? That's the worst decision you could have made. Oh, uh, spoiler alert. Widow Mines do not attack cannons. Now, this army's actually getting quite scary here. Widow Mines might be able to hold at the top of the ramp. We'll see if this actually manages to happen or not. We've got to be getting close to the end of the game. Now, uh-oh, Widow Mines on the ramp. He's got to go for it. Here we go. The Zelts do take a lot of damage, but with the uh, Supply Depots down, I think that's got to be pretty much it here. Soak Ahead has somehow managed to stockpile resources off of three mining SCVs, and that is going to be it. Oh, with the fatty starts! <laughs> Oh, God. And we have, I can't even call it a rage quit. I don't even think he knows that typing GG is the standard. Oh, God. Well, let's see where it all went right here for Bunny Box. I really want to draw attention to those storms doing more friendly fire damage than anything. But I think that that is going to be the slow-mo replay of the day. All right, so here we go. He does lower the depots. I love the Widow Mine throwing there, but unfortunately he did not raise the depots. So here comes the Zealots. So there, this is in slow-mo right now. The Zealots do march right on in. You gotta be knocking his door. Uh, plus one attack upgrade and one one actually on those uh, siege tanks. Very nice there. And the Widow Mines have blown their load. I think about a kill apiece. Yes, they did. And then here come the High Templar. They're like, we got this. And the Zealots are like, no. And that's the Zealot who actually died to friendly fire side storm. I gotta say, man, Zealots and Bronze League heroes are the best. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for your patience. We are going to be back with more awesomeness. And uh, I would go back and watch that SCB die, but keep in mind that they uh, they have different death animations every time I've actually tested it. So that one is on the books forever. I'm so glad I got that on film. That would be on, like, America's Funniest Home StarCraft videos. If that was a, if that was a show, which I – basically that's what Bronze League Heroes is, let's be honest. If that was a show – I would submit that to try and win the $1,000 grand prize, whatever it is they got for being on that show. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. More games on the way. I'm going to throw out my voice, man, in that first game. I did not expect to be that epic. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, my God. I'm so glad to be casting Bronze League Heroes again. Hello everyone, this is HGS Guest Gear Box. Some more Bronze League Heroes! Oh my god, I'm super excited. I really don't know how else to say it, guys. Down the bottom right side, it is gonna be Zawoman! Zawo- Zawoman! Look at Zawoman over there. And down the bottom left side, it is going to be Dahlia Murder! I got nothing funny on that guy's name whatsoever, but it is going to be Bronze League Heroes, which is one of my favorite series to cast. It is where we cast the very best of the very worst, and really the whole point of this series is to remind you guys you can have fun in StarCraft 2 no matter how good or how absolutely terrible you are. So I, I just like to encourage everyone, get out there and play some more games and uh, also enjoy this series, I suppose. I guess actually casting this, I, I've talked to actually a lot of pro gamers about about this where obviously I love casting pro games I mean I have over 2,000 pro games on my channel only like 15 or I, I guess getting closer to 20 now Bronze League Heroes games but the thing I love most about Bronze League Heroes is is that you have no idea what the players are going to do given any matchup given anything it is actually a complete surprise every single time right now though we are gonna be having the woman Zawoman is going to be going for a Forge Fast Expanse, scouting after Forge. Now, normally you would scout after Pylon, but hey, man, Bronze League Heroes, man, anything goes. We do see the drone right there, going to be scouting out this base. And unfortunately for the drone, he cannot build a Pylon like a, uh, a, a Protoss player could with his probe if he decided to. Now, he's going to be scouting out right there. What does this say? What does that say? It just says Core Hall City. 
Fancy little flags right there. And the probe over here going to be attacking this drone. I think the drone's going to try and block it as long as he can. Little does he know there's actually not enough money in the bank to uh, to actually throw that down. He is going to be going for a cannon first right here. We'll stick the probe right on that drone. And there is going to be another probe at the expansion over here for Dahlia Murder, which is quite the mouthful. That is way too many syllables for, for one person to handle. But uh, anyway, spawning pool going to be on the way. And is, is there ever going to be a nexus? Or is this going to be just like a forge slow expand? Oh, he takes the gas right there. Could easily cancel that and begin blocking the hatchery if he decides to. Zawuman has no gas. He is indeed going to be saving up for that nexus, which is exactly what he's doing right now. Decides to throw down another cannon. This is going to be way premature on this. I think that might actually be in range of... Uh, looks like Dolly Murder says, Don't like it when's done to you. Question mark. I'm not quite sure what that means, but we're going to go with it. Don't like it when done to you. <laughs> or when's done to you. Uh, it does look like he's a woman saying, I have no idea what you're talking about, buddy. So, whatever. There is going to be a cannon over here. Wait, wait, is this spotted by the Overlord? Oh, it barely is. I think he's too busy trying to make fun of the Protoss. He doesn't realize that the one random cannon over there and drones are going to be pulled off the line right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't think these drones are actually going to be able to mine. I think they can mine off of all these patches right here. Maybe this one is in range. Nope. No, it is not. So, as long as the drones don't venture into the danger zone, which that drone just did, they won't get taken out. Another cannon on the way. So, I have a feeling. Uh oh. Uh oh. Dahlia Murder saying, LOL. Noob L. Elriot. Noob Elriot. Noob Elriot. He says, as he is the one losing to uh, the cannon so far. So, he does throw down a macro hatch inside his main base. He has Zerglings on the way. I don't know if four is going to be enough, though, for three cannons. Now, you got to remember the thing about a cannon contained like this with Protoss is that. Uh, it, it, this is a lot of money. I mean, two cannons is a hatchery, plus another 150, plus another 100. And so it doesn't pay for itself just killing the hatchery by itself. You have to delay mining. You have to force them to go attack. They don't want to, something like that. We have quite the wall end going on over here. Actually, I think that it's kind of hard to tell. I think that this is open for units to go through. We'll find out pretty darn soon. It does look like the Nexus is finally going to be going down. Now, anyways, back to what I was originally trying to say is that uh, I have a feeling that Dahlia Murder really hates Protoss. Looks like the Changeling is going to be, our Broodling, excuse me, going to be running over here trying to take out the cannon. Unable to do so. Lots of links have ran on by those. Take a look at this poster over here as that elite Torrent chief is going to be waving it at us. But there are two cannons in position here with a third cannon on the way. Another pylon as well so he doesn't lose power to all of his buildings. More Zerglings going to be on the way. Now, I hate to tell this to Dahlia Murder, but if he hates Protoss, he is about to hate them a lot more because Zerglings are not going to be enough to break this down, especially the third cannon going to be on the way right now. So this is going to be bust attempt number one. We'll see if we can actually manage to pull it off. Overlords are on the way. He is, of course, supply blocked. One random Zergling. Oh, oh, then you turtle like a... Uh, we, we, we can guess which word he was trying to use there. No skill, I... Zawuman says, sorry. It looks like the extractor will eventually get taken out by these cannons over here. But uh, lots of Zerglings now on the field. We also have a Baneling Nest on the way. Double Hatchery is up. And it's okay, your... Hang on, hang on. I know he can't see this, but I just got to correct him. Otherwise, it's going to really bug me. You're a noob. And Zawuman's saying, you know what? I live in Canada, and I'm really sorry that I'm rushing you. So, our, our cannon rushing you, that is. So, Zawuman, man, getting a little bit upset here. Lots of Banelings going to be on the way. Now, he doesn't have enough gas, though. He is mining double gas, so I'm kind of proud of him at this point. Now, normally going double gas on one base sucks, and I got to say that in this situation, it is no different. We'll see. I don't know if there's actually enough Banelings here to break this or not. More cannons are are on the way for Zawuman. Now, also keep in mind that a Lair Tech would have won him this game immediately because he couldn't just go for the uh, for the Nice But there's going to be the pylon being taken out. The Link is going to attempt to run in. They do actually manage to get on by. We'll see if he has enough here to kill off these cannons, but unupgraded Zerkling versus three cannons soon to be four. Definitely makes it tough. We do see more reinforcements on the way, though, here. The Stalker trying to clean stuff. Apparently, cannons are a good unit uh, to have in these situations. Another pylon is going to get dropped right down. So the one base Zerg play not really working out for him. Like I was saying, guys, in Bronze League Heroes, try not to go one base Zerg. Unless you're going to be going for a Nidus Worm here, try not to stay on one base for this long. We'll see, though, if we can actually manage to make this work as he does have more Zerglings on the way, just running out across now. This is one thing about Bronze League Heroes that we all know and love is that uh, Tier 1 units all day. 
that's really all you have to get in uh, in Bronze League Heroes to go for Tier 1. Now, we do actually have the Immortal on the way, which is going to be really, really confused once this attack actually happens. Because, once again, I think it is going to be all Zerglings here. So, more Zerglings are on the way. And I got to say, Dahlia Murder is actually doing pretty good keeping his supply toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with his opponent. I know he is definitely behind here. Then again, he is on one base right now, but he does have the Banelings, I assume, going to be on the way once again. You know, if it doesn't work the first time, try, try again. That's what they always said. My favorite children's book was about a failed Zergling bust as well. So very inspirational here for Dahlia Murder to be able to try this once again. Now, unfortunately for him, he is going up against some really stiff resistance. I mean, this is this is like really stiff. I, I'm just going to keep using the word stiff because I'm five. We'll see if he manages to break this down, though. He has uh, more Banelings this time. Not sure if he's going to be able to kill these off or not. Dahlia Murder, though, he does have a lot of Zerglings. Finally going to have Zergling speed as well, which I think is going to be the key difference in this round of attacks is that uh, the, the Zergling speed is now done. He will begin being able to attack the infantry. Here comes more Banelings as well. I love how he sends the Banelings in first to take all the cannon shots. And uh, does and then the Banelings just give up after that point. I mean, really, when your job is to suicide yourself, really, what more can you do? The, uh, the Cyber Export does get taken out, though. These Lings have run rampant through the base. The main base is undefended. He actually has got to be making some serious headway here. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to finish the entrance off, though, as the probes do manage to retreat back to the expansion. The Immortals here are like, uh, what the hell is going on? It does look like the cannons will get taken out. If there's more reinforcements here, he might actually be able to break this. All the cannons will be taken out here. Uh, one cannon does raise. That cannon has 28 kills. I don't think they give ranks to cannons, but it, oh god, the Immortals are trying to move. Not a good choice. Not a good choice. I think the Immortal will survive. The probes, though, are pulled off the line. Here comes more and more Zerglings on the way. Are they actually going to be able to uh, break through this wall in time before more buildings are thrown down? The uh, cannons trying to be thrown down here, but guess what? The links have shown up. The Immortal so low on HP, but he himself has 13 kills, and what HP he finally gets taken out. More links are on the way. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have any Banelings done just yet. So these probes, man, these are the, the probes from the movie 300. You guys remember that movie? Because uh, we are recreating right here. They're trying to hold the line, trying to save the cannon as well. More links still streaming over here. I love how this whole time he's just left the uh, the cannons over here. He's like, no, go ahead and finish those. Um, just leave them there. That's fine. Just leave them at the front door. I don't mind. More Banelings are going to be on the way. So I think that was bust attempt number two, or was that bust attempt number three? I honestly don't remember. I've lost track at this point. But the Observer over here, he's like, yep, there's still just one base over here for Dahlia Murder. Does have the one queen here trying to inject larvas. I got to say, though, Zerg at the lowest ranks is the most difficult race to play. This wallet is just looking more and more ridiculous the longer this game goes on. But it does look like the Banelings going to roll right in. Can he do any damage? He does up the cannon. And a couple of the pylons. Not bad, not bad. Although more cannons are going to be finished up here. And this wall, once again, the longer this game goes on, it is just in sadder and sadder of shape. Um, I gotta say, Dahlia Murder being relatively cost effective, not the most cost effective I've seen, but uh oh, uh oh, the Void Rays are here, gonna be taking out the Overlords. So the two delayed Void Rays at almost the 14 minute mark, they are going to be finding a base that has absolutely no anti air. He is sending that right to his opponent. Look, take the Banelings here, they're going right for the mineral line. Might actually be able to kill off a couple of probes here. Oh, uh, come on, Baneling, what are you doing? Yeah, there you go, does detonate, does kill off a couple because they were already damaged. Do you mind that a Baneling detonation brings him down to 5 HP? But uh, I don't know if he doesn't make if he doesn't make enough Banelings right now. He's not going to be able to break this. I don't think he's going to be too happy about that. As I was saying before, though, I have a feeling that Dahlia Murder does not like Protoss. He's very upset about the state of Protoss right now, and it does get there. He's going straight for the Queen here, and pop goes the Queen. A couple of drones going to get taken out, and by a couple, I mean every single one. The Zerglings, though, actually do manage to make it in. Where have these Zerglings been? Did they just run by? That can't be. Either way, he has made it inside the main base. Maybe those Zerglings were just left there from before. You gotta go straight for the next right now. So what he can actually try and do is hide a base over here, make a bunch of queens, and uh, use spore callers to defend against these void rays. The void rays are pretty much just going to town on that main base. So it's gotta come down to these Zerglings. Can he actually manage to do it? Four Banelings is all he can afford. Cannot throw down a hatchery anywhere else. He's gonna be losing all of his drones. Did he lose all of his drones? Yes, he did, because saving drones is for schmucks. He's gonna be destroying his working class economy by killing all of his drones. He no longer can afford a drone. He no longer 
Tracker has a drone, so he is just ready. Oh god, he didn't even get the Nexus there. That's going to be frustrating. As the two, now four Void Rays out on the field, and Rut Row. I, uh, I hate to give a spoiler alert, guys, but Dahlia Murder is not going to win right now. As the Bailey's going to be rushing in there, they don't even get close to the cannon. It's doing just minimal damage here. The Lean's going to try and finish this off. He decides to go straight for the probe line, but guess what? The probes are going to be lined into the cannons. This is not looking good. I don't think he has any units left. He is down now to zero attacking units. All he has, oh, he says, LOL can OP, and then we'll, we'll just fill in the blanks here. L2P, real race. All right. Because, oh, GG Nub. Oh, Zawoman with the perfectly timed return BM there at the end. You know, I always thought that I had to cast Indra Games to get the awesome rage, but apparently I've just been missing out and I need to cast Bronze League Heroes as Dahlia Murder. You know, I think, you know what? I'm going to play Devil's Advocate here, and I think he was absolutely in the clear with that smack talk. I cannot see a single mistake he made throughout that entire game. So really, I mean, this proves, this proves that Protoss is overpowered, I think, after this game. So uh, all he had left was the hatchery right there. And uh, the BM is always so good. Let's recap on this wonderful uh, conversation that they had. Don't like it wins done to you. I think he was talking about blocking the Nexus, but little does he know, I don't think Zawuman was uh, actually planning to expand at that point. So he tried the, uh, the oh, you don't like it when it happens to you. And then Zawuman's like, I, I don't know what you're saying. Dahlia Murder saying, LOL, Noob Elriot, which I think is my favorite part of this whole game. Noob Elriot, uh, then you turtle like a fill in the blank, no skill, ice, forward slash. There's a forward, yeah, there's a forward slash. Um, sorry, says Zalman. Sorry, I mean, I gotta say, Zalman's been really nice this whole time. It's okay, you're a noob. And then, of course, I had to correct them. It was just eating me up inside. And then he says, so sorry, so still being nice right there. And then, uh, LOL, can OP. And you can, you can decide what he said right there. L2P, real race. Because, obviously, it had nothing to do with his skill. And then Zalman's like, all right, GG, nub. I already know I got the win. So, Anyway, it's going to be uploading this. I do know that this game was not uh, was not Heart of the Swarm, but you know what? There's a lot of Bronze League players still playing Wings of Liberty, which is fine. That is great. I think they're waiting for the game to be a little bit cheaper. But uh, either way, guys, if you want to send replays into Bronze League Heroes, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend Sinvicta is the one who sorts through all those. And uh, I got to say, he's seen some pretty bad games, but he also finds the gems in the rough. So anyways, now that my computer is up and running again, once I get my new audio equipment, I will be making lots and lots more of Bronze League Heroes. It's always a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is ATS Gask here, and it is time for some more Bronze League. Lifting off your main base and floating into the middle, Heroes. That is right. It's going to be a TVP between Buzz Bomb, who, well, I can't really say he's up on the top right side because he's already evacuated. Houston, we have liftoff. As he is going to go ahead and fly right into the middle, I can only assume he's going to go right to here, the high yield. And down in the bottom left side, he has not lifted off his base. I can only guess it's because he can't. Uh, he's going to be dropping out a pylon here, yes. Yes, drop the pylon, drop the pylon. All right, he does go ahead and throw that down right there. The probe's going to be scouting out, and he is going to be one super, super, super confused probe here as uh, he's going to be scouting a base that does not exist. I don't think he's going to be seeing this. Oh, my God, why aren't you landing? Land the command center. What are you doing? You had one job, which was to land the command center, but his 12 APM just was not enough. Those SCVs, there we go. We got one per mineral patch already as he does have the uh, six SCVs there. So, my God, I'm so excited. Now, for those of you who do not know, Bronze League Heroes is where we cast the very best of the very worst. We take a lot of the fun, the low-level games out there. We have a laugh, and we go out and play some StarCraft on our own. SCV, you better get to work. I love this. Already going for the refinery over here. I, I don't know the math on it, if this is ever even going to be faster than if you would have just stayed in his main base. But you can see the probe right here is like, uh, guys? Are, uh, uh, did we get sent to a barren planet? Now he should be able to scout out over here and see the base go. Oh god. Oh no, he doesn't. He's gonna miss it again. He, I, I can guess he assumes that he knows where his opponent is going to be at, uh, which is going to be in the middle. I mean, where else would the Terran player be? I guess he could float over here or something. I don't know. He's got to guess, though, exactly where he's going to be, and we are going to be having the Cybernetics Core. Now, unfortunately for Budaman, did I ever say Budaman? Did I say that? 
I can't remember if I ever said Buddha Man. Anyways, it is Buddha Man here who says, you know what, Pylon Schmylon is going to be throwing down that pylon way late. You can see he doesn't have his probes on the way. He also has his uh, simulator here done with no probes inside, but that's fine because it's Bronze League. You guys know, you guys know where that was headed anyways. Anyways, we have the Engineering Bay first here. Oh my god, is he going to go for a Planetary Fortress? I bet you he is. I bet your biscuits he's going to go for a planetary already. Oh, oh, God, I was about to say it was one, but he does have SCVs on the way. The engineering bay before barracks, but after refinery, it's a pretty solid build, guys. Just kidding. Don't ever do that. We do have the Zealot out right now. The Cybernex core is done. Not enough gas to be able to really use this to pile on. Finally, another pile is going to be coming up here, so it won't be supply block this time. He's like, fool me oneself. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Still shame on me because I'm fooling myself. But uh, either way, more SCVs are going to be on the way. Now, thankfully for him, it doesn't take very long to saturate this. Unfortunately for him, a stalker right here can kill every single unit without actually being attacked. But that is okay because that level of strategy has not been seen in ages here in Bronze League Heroes. So it's one of those things where I have no idea what's ever going to happen. You at home never has any idea what's going to happen other than the games. They may not be good but my god, are they good. We do have the reactor going to be on the way right now. I love how he has no units for defense right now. Doesn't have a planetary, doesn't have marines. And he's like, you know what? You know what? Bear with me here. The, the smart thing to do right now is to build a reactor, which is like the longest building to ever build ever. My god, they take forever. Uh, 50 in-game seconds just to be able to make two marines at a time. But thankfully for him, man, uh, Buddha man, he is living up to his name. He is being a pacifist. He is being a Buddha. And he's just going to chill back at his home. So that is, uh, that's going to be great for him. Buzz Bomb. I love how his name, for some reason, I love how his name is in all caps. I don't know what it is about that, but I feel like it adds to the atmosphere of the build that you're looking at right now. It's like, hey, man, why didn't you build an orbital command? Because Buzz Bomb! Why did you make a reactor before making any buzz bomb? An engineering bay for buzz bomb. And really, I feel like that's the answer to everything. And there's the planetary fortress because buzz bomb. Oh, buzz bomb. I am a fan of your 19 supply compared to 35 right now for Buddha Man. Now, Buddha Man's got a Stargate on the way. He's got a gateway as well. Warp Gate being researched here. So he's not doing too bad. I mean, he's not doing laughably bad. Uh, laughing. All right, guys, look, talking is very hard. I said laughingly bad. I meant laughingly bad, but it's really the same thing. The Oracle is on the way, and he's going to rally it over here to the natural where he's already scouted that there's nothing there, but that's fine. I mean, to each their own. I mean, some of us like to go for planetary fortresses first, okay? I don't know what it is about Bronze Age heroes and planetary fortresses, but for the first time in weeks... I feel like we're going to be getting a new unit from Heart of the Swarm in Bronze League Heroes. It is going to be the Oracle, and the crowd goes crazy. <sighs> That's the audience. Whatever. We have the Oracle right now. Got to be moving on out. I'm going to laugh if he ends up losing this before he even spots really where his opponent's base is. All right, so for sure he's got to scout something over here, right? All right, he spotted a supply depot and a refinery, so he knows what's up. He knows where that army is. He's got to turn this ship right around, and he just needs to tell it to attack. There it goes. But he flew it too far to the left side. You're going to lose it. What are you doing? No! Six HP there. If you just leave it right here, you can kill off every single SCV. Why do people never know this in Bronze League Heroes? And he decides to make another Oracle because this one went so well. He just was like, you know what? I'm going to make another Oracle and I'm going to get two more kills. <laughs> it does look like the Stalker Zealot is going to be moving out right now. And that might actually be able to end this game right here, right now. If with a little bit of good control, what he can do is camp over the high ground. Hopefully he is hearing me. Buddha man, you can camp over the high ground. Sometimes I just want to go back in time and just control this army for him. But then Bronze League Heroes wouldn't be nearly as fun, now would it? The army is going to be moving right in here. And this is the strong point of Buzz Bomb. He's got all his supply depots set up over here. He's got missile turrets as well. The Marines are over on the left side. Decides to focus down the barracks. Out of all things, the barracks says he loses his oracle there. Attempting to do that. And he doesn't even kill off the barracks just yet. The Marauder in there, he's like trying to put his suit on really quick. He's like, oh god, this place has got to burn. Oh, and then he dies. Uh, but no one mourns a Marauder that never spawns. The Mushroom Core gets taken out, though, as it does look at the Marauder right now. is got to be able to clean up house as it does scare this army away. 
My God, Buddha Man, you screwed up. You allowed Buzz Bomb to continue to play, although he's only got seven workers on this mineral patch. He's got three idol workers over here, which is quite cute. They're flexing at each other. They're, uh, this guy right here is in the rear with his gear. That is uh, what's going on right there. Kind of gross, but you know what? We, we, we got to support it, guys. What, what an SCV does in his private room is up to the SCV and his partner. All right, so we do have a command center now as he has taken both high-yielding patches. Now, it's so funny because I remember casting high-level games on this map, and I'm always like, all right, guys, well, um, there's, not that many, there's not that many expansions on this map. You're not really going to see anyone ever take the high-yield expansion. I don't know why this voice keeps evolving into, like, whatever that was. But here in Bronze League Heroes, you're going to be seeing... Uh, both high yield expansions taken before any other base. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but anyways, those look at the brain probably gonna be moving forward. Oh, the Void Rays are so pissed using prismatic alignment because why the hell not? And they do kill off that Marauder. We got 22 supply here to 54. I got a hand to Buzz Bomb though, man. He he's a champ. He's like, you know what? I lost all my units. I got no units. What am I gonna do? I'm going to make a missile turret. It's going to be fine. It's going to hold me up. No, wait, guys. I'm going to make two missile turrets. But I'm going to queue up those missile turrets from the same SCV. Not even going to have every SCV working right now. This is some classic Bronzy heroes. Now, classic Buzz Bomb, man. As he does have uh, now nine SCVs mining there. I'm quite proud. And let's take a look at his income here. In comparison, 500 to 700, which is not bad, considering he's only got 10 SCVs on minerals. And he does have a base over here. I'm just going to assume that that is as close as it can get. I don't actually know if that's the case or not. Uh, also, if these stalkers would move literally like eight void ray lengths up here, which if you're measuring something in void ray lengths, you know how close that is. If he just moves right here, you can't mine from these minerals. Uh, whatever, but this is why we love Bronze League heroes. No, no upgrades on the Marines. No, uh, no stem, no combat shields, no Marauder slow. Really nothing of use is at his base right now, but it looks like he's going to once again attack the strong point, and the missile turrets will actually become a useful here. Uh, he will be able to at least do quite a bit of damage with them before they die. The SMEs here, guys, be careful. The planetary is up. No, my life for ire as the Zelts run in there because Bronze League Heroes Zelts are so stupid. He lost the Void Ray. Loses one of the Void Rays, tries to take out the other one. These SCVs need to repair, though, as the Planetary is going to save the day with or without repair. Oh, he's going to lose it. Oh, God, that was so close. Oh, no, he's going to lose it. He loses it to the two Marines. Oh, God, loses that there. He's got to lose the Stalkers as well. Bronze League Heroes. A lot of people have been commenting that my voice is slowly going out, and I got to say, Bronzy Heroes is to blame. It is way too epic. It is way too hilarious that my voice can actually not handle it. Where is it? Where are you going, SCV? What? What could you ever hope to accomplish? Oh God! What are you doing? What are you doing? Cue up the Benny Hill theme. I'm not exactly sure where this SCV is going, but it is going to be glorious. I'm sure he is going to do something useful. Not that he actually has any. Where is this SCV actually going? Like for reals? For reals, though, where are you going, SCB? All right, he's going over here, and he'll just wait out right here because his income right now is at 500 still. 14 minutes into a game, still at that low of income, but he has managed to make two workers at a time, everybody. He's also going to be throwing down even more missile turrets because the other ones actually did do quite well for him here, actually ending up getting him into a good spot. But I got to say, if Buddha Man loses this, I am going to lose it because he has had ample opportunity to do something smart. And of course, have, oh my God, this base up here is actually gonna be spotted as soon as it goes down. Obviously, Buzz Bomb is hacking. You can tell by his builder that he is obviously hacking here, as it does like this will get taken out here. The Marine is gonna kill off this poor probe, and he forces the cancel. I love how it's so easy for him to expand down here, but he decided to expand. Oh my God, it's gonna get scouted as well. If he cancels this, if he cancels this Nexus when he has this whole army right here, okay. All right, he's not going to cancel it there, so I don't have to throw out my voice just yet. But uh, we'll see. Taking a look at the army supply right now. 18 army supply to 20. That's when you know it's a great game at the 16-minute mark. Uh, I will say neither player is hovering a ridiculous amount of minerals, but uh, neither player... Oh, wait, what did he build up here? He is building a factory! We have a factory, a proxy factory in his own old base up on the top right side. I don't think I've ever said that in a cast. Oh, my God, is he going to kill this? I'm pretty sure this Oracle is going to delay the in-base own proxy factory in his own main. 
right as it goes down. That's going to be hilarious if that Oracle actually stops it. He doesn't have enough energy. Oh, no, he didn't deactivate his ability. So he ran out of all of his energy. Wah, 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 wah. Now, unfortunately for him, he can't actually kill his off. He will randomly spot this fact. The SCP is like, oh, God, oh, dear God, oh, dear God, it's coming back. Can he attack me? No, he can't. All right, so that factory is actually going to finish. Uh, any more SCVs on our way for our Terran? Of course not, because that would be too smart. We do have another factory going on down here. What's... All right, a missile turret at a factory. Got the pretty sweet base going on over here. Uh, I swear, these are always the partners I get in 4v4, man. They're like, no, no, I got elite strategy. I'm going to build behind my mineral light. It's going to be great. No, just, just get husky. It's going to be great. Don't, don't, it's going to be great. All right, so we have the Marine Marauder going to be moving out right now. They do have 1-1, one, one, which I'm quite impressed he actually managed to get that. Here he goes. Does he have stim pack? No, but he does have Marauder Slow, which is very surprising here. He is going to be marching right up here, and the Militia Core could use Photon Overcharge, could use Time Warp, could really use anything other than the die ability. Ah! Oh, he does get the Photon Overcharge off, though. At the very last second, that was pretty clutch. I'll give that to him, which is going to save him. It's not going to save the Pylon, however which I think is the uh, the biggest upsetting defeat so far in this game. And this guy's going to lose all of his energy as well. He, he has it selected. He's like, all right, should I click it? Uh, should I, do I need the energy? Um, I think I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and let it run out. All right, so this army is going to be moving out. Now we have three Stalkers, an Immortal, two Oracles, and a Void Ray. And they are on Mission Easy mode. I was going to say Mission Impossible, but... Really, if they screw this up, that's that's their own fault. I do love the proxy factory. All right, this base is quite shaping up over here, though. He's got the factory. He's got the double starport, which is quite nice. He's got the reactor on there. Got some Vikings going. Uh, he's got a bad case of near supply block, though, so he's got to watch out for that. But uh, the oh my god, if he loses something with these missile turrets, I swear to God. All right, he's not gonna lose anything to that. Doesn't look like the stalkers over here are gonna be able to kill us off. Maybe able to force the lift off, and he does. Houston, we have lift off. Note that I only do the Houston voice in Bronze League Heroes games because they lift off at the most hilarious times. It was the best of times, guys. Uh, speaking of best of times, just more Vikings overall on the way. I guess he's just like, all right, I spotted two Oracles, so I need ten Vikings. That's going to be what the counter to that is. I think the factory may somehow, against all odds, manage to survive. We do have a third starport now done, uh, mining with a grand total of five SCVs on gas. Uh, we'll have to see exactly what this transitions into, but our Protoss player, he's managed to sustain a lead this entire game, believe it or not. And... Why would you expand here? This is the one expansion you should not take. You have the whole map. You have center map control. You know where the army is at, and you expand to his fort. God, I just want to quit video games altogether. And look at this. I mean, you got to remember that SCBs have long sight vision, so we can spot these cans. If this one Marine forces the cancel, I'm going to laugh really hard. I think he will be able to clean that one out. The Void right here, though, he is pissed at that factory. You know what? Forget that the Terran player is expanding in your fourth base. I'm going to kill that factory, all right? That is going to be a thing that happens. Oracle's over here taking out a singular Marine. The Oracle loses all of his energy. Why is it that the other Oracle has zero kills and 200 energy? This guy has three kills and zero energy. I feel like that's just not a fair workload. But this is why we love Bronze League Heroes. I can make up a song for Bronze League Heroes. Like, Bronze League Heroes, everybody's bad. Bronze League Heroes, it makes me really sad. Bronze League Heroes, the games are freaking sweet. Bronze League Heroes. Now I have to tweet. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I, I haven't quite worked on the lyrics very much. But uh, the Marine Marine going to be moving out. We got uh, Vikings now in the mix. Keep in mind, though, that Void Rays are relatively good versus Vikings if neither party is microing. And let's be honest, neither party will be microing. Here we have 28 probes here. This could be a massacre. Can the cannons actually save them? Oh, God, they're just out of range. Those probes, what have you done? You've got to get out of there. You've got to go, probes. All right, so he does manage to save those. But uh, can he save anything else but his own sanity? Because he sure as hell ain't saving my sanity. It does look like the Stalkers will be able to kill off two of the Vikings total, which is probably his biggest victory this entire game. We are starting to see plus three armor upgrade. Not bad, not bad. Looks like more Marine and Marauder are going to be moving up here. Where is the Protoss army at? Why do you have no units? You have 114 supply. Where are your units? There they are. They're going to be running over here. But he loses all of his probes. He put them on the attack command. No reason to do that ever. No, you don't need to do that. Force fields here could clean this up. I think this army is overrun. Although half the army is not actually attacking. There he goes. All right, he manages to get that one void ray. 
Got to move in here. We'll see if he can kill off this entire base. He's definitely going to need that. We do have the Viking drops over in the main. Uh, can he kill a Stalker? I think he will be able to. So this one Viking will just go to town on this base. He's got to see if the upgrade's on the way. I don't think he's even going to notice it, though. All right, this Viking's going to have a fun time killing off stuff. This Void Ray, can he do it? Can he kill off the Marines? It's got to be close. No, gets taken out there. The Void Ray tried so hard to kill a building, and it just is not meant to be. And, of course, Buzz Bomb is like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm just going to throw down more missile turrets. Although, one thing that's really not good for Buzz Bomb, other than everything, is the fact that he has not expanded. Now, I like the idea of trying to expand. Didn't like the idea of expanding into your opponent's base. That is not a good strategy. I don't recommend it, no matter what league you're in. Here comes the Widow Mine Man. He is going to waddle that thing all the way over there. And let's be honest, that is pretty dope placement. I don't think we've seen a single observer this entire game. And, oh, oh, Widowmine, here he goes. He's actually got some pretty sick Widowmine placement. He may be hovering 3,000 minerals, but he will place a Widowmine, man. He's got to try and burrow. That one will die. The other Widowmine, though, is ready to rumble. He may kill a Zealot, man. We may, we may never know, but either way, he may... Oh, oh, the probe right there could have got taken out. He hasn't been able to resaturate this base. This one is fully saturated with 24 probes. Could actually transfer some of those over. He does have a couple idle probes over here. Oh, he grabbed some of them. There he goes. There he is. Uh, he's slowly sending them over to that base. So I got to say that Budaman's trying to get back in this. But our Terran player, I mean, he's got a lot of money. And the thing about low-level players is that they will hover a lot of money until... They are completely mined out, and then that's when their macro kicks in. Now, a normal player, their macro is going to kick in, like, as you're mining. You know, you're going to start building stuff. Not in Bronze League Heroes. There's a golden rule where you don't spend the money until you can't mine anymore. That is how it goes. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like... Uh, being a working class citizen you save all your money and then you retire and you spend all your money That's just kind of how it goes. So we will see What he gets with all this money, but I mean his supply is gonna start going up here I mean look at this he's making two Marines two Vikings and I believe in a widow mine at the same time there So he has learned how to build multiple units at the same time, which is quite impressive He has however not learned how to get stim pack or combat shields which that's like going to Costco without buying 64 rolls of toilet paper. I mean, you just don't do that as uh, it does look like the Marines are going to be moving out. Not quite sure what the point is here. We have a hallucinated Phoenix. This is actually better than how I play. So he does have the hallucinated Phoenix right there. Did not activate the mine. Did kill it off. And the Oracle does get taken out. The Widow Mine here does activate. It does get a kill. However, without more Widow Mines, this could be a disaster. I also love how far spread out everything is. I mean, just take a look at what you see right here. We got a bunch of Marines over here. We got some units over here. We got, I don't know what the hell is going on up here. And that doesn't matter, though, because it is Bronze League Heroes. He has the most dope-looking Terran base I think I have ever seen. I feel actually like we're playing Command & Conquer. This looks like a Command & Conquer base, all right? Now, we do have another Command Center on the way over on the right side. And the Widow Mine there gets a kill number two. An Observer is on the way, though, so thankfully for Budaman, he actually knows how to deal with Widow Mines. Well, I wouldn't really say deal with Widow Mines. He knows how to spot them after they've killed his own army. Uh, so there he goes. He does take him out. Well played. Well played. You know, at, at this point, you, you got to really try and find something to be excited about. And that, oh, more Widow Mine kills incoming. I believe they, uh, they did get their shots off before they both died. They got their shots and vaccinations before dying. Whoa! Vikings out of nowhere. A bunch of dead Vikings now. Uh, did get a couple of shots off. But until he gets his whole army together, I think he is going to be struggling right now. I got to say, man, Buzz Bomb, even if he loses right now, he wins in our heart. Down goes the Observer, though. So any Widow Mines here will be effective. One Zealot goes down. Uh, I don't think there's any more Widow Mines, though. He's trying to hold the line. It's kind of hard, though, when you don't really have a line. It's just a bunch of units that are mismatched and throughout the base. I think he is actually going to lose here. He will kill off the Vikings, uh, but not before losing his own Colossus here. But remember, the Planetary Fortress. Never count out the Planetaries and Bronze League Heroes. They do get quite a few kills here. Seven kills overall before finally going down. There is the other Planetary over here, which is up to 15 kills. The army, though, going to get a good angle. The SCV is going to try and repair. I don't think it's going to be enough unless more SCVs begin joining in on this battle. Uh, oh, God. Is he actually going to hold this? Is he going to hold this? The planetary fortress that could. He might actually be able to hold this for now. Kills off a sentry as well. The Vikings going to be reinforcing, if you can even call it that. Oh, my God. He's actually going to hold this. He is actually going to hold this. He has scared the army away. What is this game that we are watching? I don't even know. 
Honestly, uh, this game is so silly that I don't even know what StarCraft is anymore. Is it Orcs in Space? Is that, uh, is that what it is? Because that is what I'm feeling like. Oh, God, that was a reference to Old School Blizzard. Anyways, lots of Vikings still remain. Uh, I, I'm just going to say that three Marauders is a lot. I think that's like the most Marauders we've seen all game. So a lot of Marauders, quote unquote, air quotes on that one. A lot of Marauders still in the game. The SVs are going to be transferring over, but this game, while it may be atrocious, I don't think there's any way that Buzz Bomb can actually win unless he makes another Planetary Fortress, which is exactly what he's doing over here on the right side. He is finally going to have some income, but unfortunately for him, uh, he's not retired yet, so he's not spending that money. But he is microing these Vikings like a champ. Kills off yet another probe. It's going to take a while for him to actually kill this Nexus. Although, I got to say, Vikings do quite a bit of damage. It's actually pretty impressive. If you take a look here, no, he can't take a look because they're going to die here. But anyways, it's damage 13 with a very fast attack speed on those Vikings. Whoa, whoa, Vikings. You should probably land if you want to do anything over here. Oh, God. Oh, God, Vikings. What have you done? It's time to leave now, Vikings. This is your cue to leave, Vikings. What are you doing, Vikings? I think he's moved one of the Vikings. But he loses two of them there. The plus one attack really starting to uh, kick in there. Starting to kick in, man. That's so kick-ass. All right, so we do have the base up and running over here. He does actually have 24 SCVs, which I got to hand him. That is the perfect number. Now he has to start mining gas here, and he has money that he can spend. What does he spend it on? One Marauder. He's got one Marauder on the way. Even though if he made some siege tanks and some Vikings, he'd actually be able to kill this army. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. I just don't think that's going to happen, guys, as uh, his base over on the right side is vulnerable. It does have missile turrets, though. It does have a planetary fortress, but I can't help but feeling like Budaman is just gearing up for a sick 33-minute timing attack. Now, normally I would say, like, all right, he's going to be maxed out when he moves in there. I think that I'm going to die of old age and turn into a skeleton that blows away into the wind before either of these players ever gets maxed out. So uh, we do have more stalkers on the way. More zealots are on the way. The army's starting to look quite nice. Oh, God, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. You do not want to be doing drops as a Bronze League hero. It never works out. Oh, God, the cannons on the right side are making me nervous. He is going to attempt to go for it. Decides to back out. Decides. No, I'm going to go. Decides to back out. Decides. And then he just unloads over here, which he could have just walked over there. He didn't save any time, but that's fine. All right, is he going to stim? Oh, wait, he doesn't have stim. Silly, silly me. All right, he's going to go ahead and try and kill these off. He will be able to get the pylon right away. That was actually smart. He focused down the pylon there. And he's got to try and kill off some probes. He will be able to do substantial damage. But the problem is that he's just so far behind his supply. He's so focused on his micro. He is going to massacre these probes again, though. Remember, Protoss, if you are crushing a battle, you don't need to randomly send in your probes. That's like sending in 10 immortals to kill a planetary, and then you're like, I'm going to finish it off with some probes. And no, you're never, you don't do that. You're going to end up losing all your workers. Two attack is done, by the way. But uh, I feel like, I feel like finally, Buddha Man, it's been slow, it's been painful, but now he's got multi prong attacks going on. What's this over here? Oh, we got a fancy drop. It probably wasn't even a drop, honestly. It's probably a walkover. Or like a hop over where you, you load them and then you unload them like halfway and you're like, all right, run the rest of the way. Uh, the zealots over here, my life for ire, which is what Bronze League Heroes zealots always say because they're so stupid, they always die. I, I literally feel like the AI on Bronze League Heroes zealots, are, are, it's just bad. It's just worse. I, I know Mike Morhay, man. He's at Blizzard. He's like, all right, guys, let's make Bronze Level zealots just so dumb my life for ire as he does manage to uh, lose more and more zealots over here the svs are going to repair now this is the stage of the game where the multitasking gets too intense for these players and they start to hover a lot of money i mean we're talking we're talking a lot of money if i had an inheritance of 2,000 minerals i'd be quite happy with that it does look at these zealots over here though will eventually burn it down one more zealot will get taken out before all is said and done. But unfortunately, that planetary fortress will go down. I think that is finally going to be it for this silly game. There we go. Buzz Bomb just leaves the game. He's like, this game does not warrant a GG because Buzz Bomb, hey yo. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. It was a ton of fun because Buzz Bomb. And I'll see you guys next time. Oh, God. Oh, they're so good. They are so good. Here was a non-drop about to take place over here. My life for ire. Hello, everyone. This is ATS Gask here back with some more Bronze League Heroes. That is right. 
It's Bronzing Heroes. I don't know what I, what I was expecting to happen there. Down the bottom left side, it is going to be none other than, in all caps, Billy. Which, uh, you know, I, I feel like, you know, oh, Billy fell down the well. Oh, Billy is a three-year-old kid who's really bad at video games. Oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. Billy is such a young person name that for the rest of this game, Billy, you are six years old and you can't change it because I said so. And his opponent up in the top right side, it is going to be Becca Sana, which is probably something completely offensive that I'm not even aware of, but uh, I don't know what it means. So it's not offensive if I, you know, it's one of those... Uh, Oblivious, being oblivious, it, God, what's the saying? I, I don't even know what the saying is right off the top of it. Being oblivious is being happy. I, I've rewritten the saying, and that is what we're going to keep it as. It's going to be a PBT uh, on Daybreak, which is a map that was just recently removed from Ladder only a couple of days ago. Doesn't mean, though, we can't watch an awesome Bronze League Heroes here. And I was thinking, as I was introducing these players, I was like, his opponent is this. But I feel like a lot of times in Bronze League Heroes, your opponent is yourself. I, I feel like a lot of these games are lost by people just being really, really bad, which is why we love Bronze League Heroes here, because we are casting the very best of the very worst, and that's why we enjoy it quite a lot. That's why I enjoy it a lot anyways, but uh, right now, we got the gateway going down. We got the barracks going down. We got a probe and SCV going to be battling it out over here, which is about the most micro you're probably ever going to see in a Bronze League Heroes, let's be honest. There is going to be a supply depot coming on up. Now, let's see. Let's all pray to the Bronze League hero gods. Um, is Billy going to get a command center turned into an orbital command? Um, are we going to be seeing an orbital command or is it going to be a planetary fortress? I really hope it's an orbital command because remember guys, the one rule of Bronze League heroes is always build orbitals. Always build orbitals. And so far we don't have one because he threw down another barracks before Orbital, an interesting choice here, but that's why we love Bronze League Heroes. And a Marine, <laughs> Marine before Orbital, screw it. Let's get the defense up, screw the Orbital. Cybernex Core gonna be on the way as well. We do have three probes and gas there. And uh, a pylon gonna be finishing up here without supply blocking himself. Well played, chap. Well, well played. I think he's a little bit behind on where he would like to be for workers. Uh, orbital Command, woo! It is on the way, baby. All right, all right. So I don't have to freak out about no orbital commands. We can actually focus on the epic game that is about to take place. Is this probe going to set up a proxy pylon? That's going to be the real question for now. A zealot is on the way. There's the money scan. Uh, he hasn't started warp gate research, so always get warp gate. Pro tip of the day. You always want warp gate in every game, no matter what. I don't care if you're cannon rushing. I don't care if you're proxy nexting. You better be getting warp gate. And right now he says, screw it, man. I'm going to spend my gas on whatever I want, which is currently on nothing. So he's got the double geysers going with no gas. Ah, he's going to throw down a stargate here. So he's skipping warp gate. He's skipping mothership core. And he's skipping the ability to deny scouting so that he can get out a stargate. Uh, well, I will be honest. The scouting potential in Bronze League Heroes is quite low. So I guess, uh, you know, you might as well just not even try and deny it. Because it's probably not going to happen. Now, we do have Marauder Slow on the way. I do want to say that way back in the day, going for Marauder Slow first is what everyone did. Because it was such a good upgrade. It was so cheap. Everyone's like, yeah, no-brainer. I'm going to get that. Now what people have started doing is going for Stim Bag. This is the earliest plus one ever Oh my god, well at least he's not going to be low on upgrades, getting plus one at the five minute mark. Either this guy is really bad, or he has the most ingenious build figured out where you hit with a plus one, and you're like, what, I just won, baby, with my plus one. We'll see if he manages to do that with his Marauder slow now as he is moving out with four Marines and a Marauder, which sounds like a really bad sitcom on NBC Family. Or is it ABC Family? I don't really watch TV, okay guys? But uh, uh, Warp Gate has started now. We do have the Oracle on the way. And a fatty supply block coming in. He does drop down that pylon right there. And uh, he does have at least a Stalker, a Sentry, and a Zealot, which also sounds like a sitcom. Apparently everything I say just sounds like a sitcom. But the four Marines have arrived. Took them a long time to get over here. But uh, we'll see. I love how there's no reinforcements on the back of this. It's just like, all right, you five. I'm going to need five volunteers to try and win this game for me. Should you choose uh, this challenge, step forward. No one steps forward, and it's like, all right, well, we're sending all of you anyway. As these five units should get taken out, the sentry here might actually be the heroes. He is tickling them to death, and they actually held that off. I don't know how that actually shaped up. 
But uh, when there's no micro, units tend to play a much different role. As we do right now have Billy. He's got to be working on a reactor here. Very nice, very nice. He's got the plus one armor already queued up. This is like me playing Warcraft 3, man. I'm just like, all right, I'm just going to queue up all the upgrades. Just when they're done, they're done. Just let me know when they're done, and I'll be fine with it. Oh, we got the Oracle over here. Oh, my God, he's got five kills and uh, no, no movement in sight. What is our blue player looking at? Where is he? Uh, well, he's definitely looking down here right now. He's like, all right, this one Marine. I've got this. Go, go, go. go. All right, so the Marine gets taken out. Here comes another Marine. The Oracle is up to 14 now, 15 kills. Oh, God, this is ridiculous. Is he going to have any SCVs left? That's the real question. All right, that Oracle is now a master. That is right. You click on him right there. It says right there that he's a master. We have another Oracle on the way, even though a single Void Ray, I think, would win this game. It is time for Oracles, man. Going to be queuing up four SCVs. Why not? Also, about a 1,000 minerals in the bank here for our Protoss player. He's also got a lot of Chrono Boost. Now, remember, it's Protoss. Chrono Boost is the most broken thing you can ever do. So Chrono Boost out all your stuff. If you look around and you see that you have energy, just Chrono Boost something. It is seriously the best ability in the game. Now, we do have an idle probe over here. He's been idle for quite some time. I think he's just mesmerized by the fact that oracles are coming out of the Stargate. There goes that oracle. All right, there goes oracle number two. This one is already... Uh, the fact is that he's, an, he's a master, so he doesn't really need to do anything anymore. So he's just going to hang out down here in the bottom center. We got the expansion coming up from Bekasana. Bekasana. It's got to be something offensive. I already know it's something offensive. Uh, he's got to be walling in here. Oh, which is actually kind of tough to do versus Terran because that actually favors the Terran. But whatever, plus one armor is actually almost done here for Billy. Here comes the Oracle, and there's no anti-air, but he also has no energy. So he just ran in there, activated it, and doesn't have enough energy to actually do anything. So that's kind of awkward. And he's going to lose the Oracle if he's not careful. He saves it there, albeit barely. 25 HP there. Missile turrets are on the way. A splattering of turrets around the base. So that Oracle, he did get one kill. But to be fair, he is now an executor. So even though he only got one kill, even though he almost died, and even though he went in there with no energy, look at her, man. She is an executor. She is ready to go. Man, that's like, she could be playing the uh, single-player campaign, man. Aren't you an executor when you're... When you're playing, maybe I'm mistaken. Either way, the one thing, or one of many things I love about Bronze League Heroes is that there's no such thing as being ahead in Bronze League Heroes. What I mean by that is, is that one player can be really far behind, but the other one decides to stop making stuff. And right now, Bekasana is suffering from a bad case of don't make stuff uh, isitis. Uh, it's, it's a very bad disease. It affects many Bronze League heroes out there. And it looks like he's trying to recover a little bit by adding on gateways. I do worry, though, that this is just a placebo effect. He's not actually going to make anything out of these warp gates. Um, and we'll see. He does have the four gateways right now. Really nothing to show for the fact that he's on two bases right now because he's got one probe mining gas. Two idle probes is hanging out over here. They're, they're kind of the security guards. They're like, all right, if you want to get in here, we need to see some ID. Apparently, they spawn at all four corners of the map, or all four corners of the Nexus. Let's see if another one spawns over here. And it does. All right, so we got the, uh, the four corners of the probes here. I don't think I've ever seen that. That is hilarious. I did not know they spawned like that. I, I just guess I don't know. Oh, matter of fact, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> The Medivac's just like, my life for ire! And he's trying to make friends with the Derby Zealots, but that wasn't a good choice. Uh, so we have the world's worst drop that ever took place, and the Marine Brother going to be moving forward here. We got some pretty fatty force fields coming up. I can't believe that Medivac. Oh, God, but it doesn't think the Marine Brother going to be marching in here. Two, oh, well, uh, reinforcements are uh, going to be warping in here, going to be able to take this out. And that was that. Now, normally in a game, I'd be like, all right, well, the Protoss player has not had the chance to transition out of gateway units, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble here versus the Marine Marauder. And then I realize it's Bronze League Heroes where gateway units tier one all day like a pro. And yes, I had to double check, make sure this actually was Heart of the Swarm. But I got to say, man, that drop, that that drop right there that is how you do drops you don't put units in the medevacs you don't bait the units of your opponent by flying your medevac into their base you just fly your medevac into their army and let it die that is showing your opponent that you have balls 
Now, a way to show your opponent that you do not have balls is by making four pylons when you already are, like, nowhere near supply cap. He's still got, like, 50 supply to go. But that's fine. He is not going to get supply capped anytime soon. But he has so many gateways. So many gateways. Bekasana, warp in units. Warp in units. Dun dun. Warp in units. Dun dun. This is like going to a hockey game or something, trying to encourage your team. Like, defense. I'm just imagining people on the field are like, oh, really? Should we be doing defense right now? Thank you, audience. Uh, anyways, we have Zealot Stalkers out of Forges on the way. But uh, Bekasana, I mean, he could buy, like, a beachfront home in California right now. He has so much money. And he's warped in some units. But where are they? Over on the left side. Oh, God. These could be the Derpy Bronze League Hero Zealots. We're about to find out if they are the Derpy Bronze League Hero Zealots. Uh, Widowmine right there. That's going to be a free stalker. Donate that to charity. And uh, here he goes. But there's going to be a counterattack over here with Marine Marauder. And surprisingly enough, Metabacks that have not committed suicide, which is always nice. The Widowmind is chilling out over here. Apparently he has two kills. Must have killed something off a little bit earlier. But this is actually where gateway units start to be useful. Look at that, a hot pickup. This is like a reverse drop where you run into your opponent's base. You're winning the battle, and then you just load your units up. It is called the reverse drop, and uh, it, it was a dance from the 60s. I don't, I don't know what. The medevac does go down. The medevac with actual units in there is struggling to micro its way back home. We do have a siege tank out now. That one is going to get taken out here as more Stalker and Zealot run up there. The Widowmine is up to three kills now. Marine Marauder should be able to kill this off. My life for ire. And I'm sorry, guys, but your life was not for anybody. That was a complete waste. No one would want to say that your life was for them because you are just ridiculous. That Stalker somehow manages to survive through all the stupidity. He manages to hang on. We do have Void Rays on the way. Which are always a good choice. We also got the plus one attack and a Twilight Council. We'll see exactly what he decides to get from this. Please don't say it's Blink because so far the amount of micro we have seen is actually at a zero. I think someone was literally at zero there for a second. Um, so we'll see what he gets from this Twilight Council. He does have more probes on the way. Did those four idle probes ever get to work? Yes, they did. My favorite part of Bronze League Hero as well is uh, a player can be up three bases and it won't matter because they just don't have probes there. Now, thankfully for Bekasana, he actually does have probes. Void Ray got to be moving on out. If you can even call it that. I mean, it's probably on the move command. Let's see. He, he is on the move command. All right. So many Marines find that. They'll take him out just like they killed that Stalker. They are a bunch of murderers. We do have Zealot Stalker over on the left side. Marine Marauder, though, going to be joined up by this army that is uh, slowly moving its way out across the map. Now, thankfully for Billy... He did not go for Stim Pack. Now, normally I don't say that about Terran players because Stim Pack is really good. I'm saying that because I don't trust his ability to stim safely. You should never stim and drive, and I feel like he is going to uh, be doing just that. Now, the Widowmine right here is up to three kills. We'll see if our Protoss player can actually break up the ramp. This is going to start being a tense moment for all players involved. Becca Sana, I don't know if he realizes he can spend all of that money I, it, it, his resources can go below a thousand. It is possible. We'll see if he manages to do that. Almost does it by expanding, which is a good choice. I mean, going for an expansion is always a good choice. Well, not always. There's plenty of uh, pl there's plenty of situations where it's not. But right now, Billy is at two attack, one armor. Not bad. Is working on the mech attack plus one as well. Plus three is on the way. Just because he got that engineering base so comedically early, it's hilarious that he's actually managing to use this. But it does like the army is in position right now. Bekasana doesn't have legs. He does have blink. But I, I'm taking, I'm willing to bet right now he will get blink and he will not use blink for the entire game. He's not, oh God, what are you doing? My life for ire. They're going to run over there and sacrifice all their lives to kill off one tank. Oh, he's on the attack. That is what we like to call a bad investment. That is like investing in Chia Pets and Beanie Babies right now. You do not want to be buying stock there. But uh, either way, he's going to be losing all of that uh, army. His main base is now exposed. He still has a supply advantage. So this army, if it does something, might be able to win the game for him. But for now, they're just kind of chilling out. They might eventually move in there. All the probes get taken out. Unfortunately, pylons cannot attack, so this isn't really going to be delaying this push much longer. Does give him time to warp in some stalkers. Did he ever research Zealot Lakes? No, he did not. All right, now's now's the moment of truth. Does he use Blink? 
Does he use Blink? There's going to be the Widow Biden right there. He could Blink into the main base if he wanted to, to be uh, making sure all these Stalkers are attacking. And he does! He used Blink! Thank God none of you took me up on that bet, because I would have lost whatever I bet on. He does Blink inside the main base. He's going to be able to kill off all the production right now, but he still has this Marine Marauder problem, don't we all? Don't we all? In fact, you can't ever kill Marine and Marauder with just a few gateway units. A bunch of Stalkers have warped in. I don't think that's actually enough here to kill this off. All right, he's got Blink. Now's the time for your Ghost to Blink Micro. Defense. Defense. Oh, God, this is not. Nope, no defense right there. Oh, uh, excuse me. But uh, either way, it does look like our Protoss player is in dire straits. But guess what? He's got Void Rays, man. And Void Rays do not mess around. Hopefully he doesn't fly directly into the Missile Turret. That would be unfortunate. No, that Missile Turret will go down. Only one shot done, which was only to shield. So right now, Billy was unable to save any probes. Uh, currently, let's take a look at the units tab here. You can see that number is plummeting right now. Oh, the SCP is going to make a run for it. He doesn't get even close, though. And uh, he could have lifted off this building a long time ago to build an SCP, but uh, that is not going to happen. That is not going to happen at all. All right, so these SCVs have got to get out of here. These are the last few remaining SCVs. There's two. Only one SCV remains. He's right here. Where are you going, buddy? Stick around on the left side. No, that's the last SCV. And there's no more command centers. So what? The oh, the missile turret. The missile turret's going to kill a Void Ray. He gets the Void Ray. Oh, God. It's actually getting dangerously close right now. I don't know who actually wins this in the long run. Uh, definitely not the probes, as they are not mining at all. They should probably go ahead and get back to work here. And uh, at this point... What does our Protoss player spend his money on? Well, right now he doesn't have any money, so I guess that answered itself. Our Terran player literally cannot make anything. He's only got supply depots, uh, a missile turtle. Oh, no, where are you going? Oh, no. Oh, no, do not go this way. This is all he has. These are his only structures. There's nothing else. If you kill these off, you win. What are you doing? Pro tip of the day. Don't do this. Oh, I wish I could go back in time. I wish I could go back in time and make it happen, but unfortunately it's not going to be happening right now. The Marine probably going to be moving over here. There is enough for another Nexus, though, in just a moment. He will be able to take this. The big blink forward, though. He's got to be able to kill off these units, or at least, uh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What are you doing? What? What are you doing? Void Ray, you got to kill the Marines. you got to get out of there, buddy. got to kill the Marines. Kill the Marines. No, you attack the Medivac. No, the three Marines are going to kill off the last anti-air and the last, uh, the last units I think that he had. Uh, oh god, the siege tank. The siege tank right there, just taking pot shots off. He is now a sergeant after that. Oh, he didn't get enough money because he's making a phoenix. A phoenix of all things, he's making a phoenix. One void ray I think could have won him this game. Oh god, if he cancels that phoenix, he wait, wait, cancel the oracle. You can expand. Oh, and here, you let the base over here. You could have just sent the units and killed them off. I don't understand Bronze League heroes sometimes, but that's because it's Bronze League epic whip fail of the day. I almost said win, and it is definitely not an epic win. Let's be honest. All right, so our Protoss player. Remember, if he gets the Oracle out, he can kill off the anti-air. He can kill off the Marines, and there's no buildings that can lift off. So if he can do it, can the Oracle make it happen? The Phoenix can... Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. The Phoenix can kill the Medivac. If the Phoenix kills the Medivac, the Oracle can kill everything else. Phoenix, get out of there. You can't lose that Phoenix. You got a micro. Micro now like you've never microed before. You have to channel the epic micro. Can he do it? This is the Battle of the Ages. The Phoenix goes in. No, he picks up a Marauder. Why would you pick up a Marauder? Oh, God. You could just kill the Medivac. Ah! Oh, God. Now all he's got left is the Oracle. And I don't think he's going to get this other Phoenix out. Uh, he might be able to. Here comes the Oracle right now. Kills off one Marine. There goes the second one down to the last one. And he gets it. There's no more anti-air. But the Starboard is down. The Stargate, I mean. Oh, it goes down. He apparently can't heal through this healing beam. Uh, he will eventually get it. But he's got to run out of energy. Oh, no. Oh, the Oracle. The Oracle is out of, of energy. He can't kill it off. He has to wait for it to recharge right now. We currently have a Siege Tank, a Widow Mine, a Medivac, and a Marauder versus an Oracle. The Marauder trying to kill off every last thing. This, par this probe could go high to Pylon. There is one over here as well. Uh, these probes could actually start working on this base for now. But what is our red, what is our red Protoss even doing right now? His APM is somehow at like 50. I don't exactly know how. 
Uh, is he not even moving his screen? Is this is this literally what he's saying? All right, so I think his screen's stuck here. Let's let's see if Billy is moving his screen at all. Uh, no. Wait, wait. There we go. There's the player camera. And all right, so he's checking out. Look, look how slow he's scrolling. He's like, all right, hmm. All right, so what do I do here? I got the Oracle. He's almost got enough energy for an attack. There's the one Marauder over there. I'm just gonna sit back and watch. Both of them currently have zero APM. That is when you know it is a good game and everyone has zero APM. Here he goes. The Oracle's gonna try and kill it. And if he kills the Marauder, he might win. Oh, he goes inside the Metavark. Oh, you know what would be useful right now? A Phoenix would be useful right now. The Oracle here is uh, kind of bored. He can't really do anything. He's got to wait for more energy once again. The probes could be working on these buildings down here. By the way, just saying. All right, so we got the epic APM spike to 18 APM there. I saw it for a moment. And the Marauder right here loaded up inside. He's a little bit terrified. Here comes the Siege Tank right now. It did clear out the pylon on the left side. Let's take a look at the Structures tab right now. We have a Twilight Council. They need to have a Fra option. Uh, he must mean draw. There we go. Draw, rather. Well, there is a draw option. It's if nothing deals any damage for a while. So can we have the most epic micro ever as the Oracle? Okay, he's got enough energy now. Doesn't have enough to kill off. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. These are the last remaining buildings. He's got to use the Oracle here to try and kill something. He should at least go for the Siege Tank because that cannot be healed. Can he do it? Does he wait a little bit longer? What do you actually do at this moment? I have no idea. There's another Oracle down here. Oh my God, he forgot about it. Oh no, the Oracle down there. He's got to try and kill the Marauder, but he's out of energy. The other Oracle is out of position. He could have used the Oracle to kill these buildings. Oh, Bekasana, what have you done? Bekasana, what have you done? I get to going GG. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to assume that that's just Bekasana's way of saying Good game. I get to going GG. Oh God, Bronze League Hero. I feel like my heart and my voice just cannot handle some of these games, but my God, are they hilarious. Wow. All right. So thank you to Sinvicta. He is the one who sorts through my Bronze League Heroes. His link's down below. Uh, he's an awesome guy. You can send your replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Do not send them to any other email. They will not get read. HuskyReplays at gmail.com. This has been Bronze League Heroes, where we cast the very best of the very worst. Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is HGS Guesky here. Back with some more Bronze League Heroes. I feel like I hit a new note every time I do that intro. Oh, God, but man, is that intro a lot of fun. I almost want to just keep saying it throughout the duration of the cast, but that'd probably get a little old. Anyways, let's go ahead and introduce our players down at the bottom right side. It is going to be Tony, who has kind of a boring name, but we're just going to assume that he's a mob boss because evidently I'm racist. Up on the top left side, it is going to be Deather. Because screw vowels, man. Vowels are not that cool anymore. Deather is going to be our Protoss, who is scouting out before Pylon. Uh, I think this is too late to be a proxy and too early to be a legitimate scout. So I'm not sure what's up with that. But either way, that probe is going to be moving out. Down goes the Pylon right there for Deather. Tony has his, his supply depot is on the way and uh, did not send out a ridiculously early time scout. I have a feeling since this is Bronze League Heroes, we are just going to be seeing a, a sillily time scout. Now, normally for the average scout, just so you guys know, for the pro tip of the day, which isn't really that pro, I'm going to be honest, is that uh, you you scout after pylon. That's what I do anyways, and I'm, I'm in Diamond League. <laughs> anyways, we have the pro right here going to be scouting. Oh, he's going for the SCV kill. Is he going to get... Oh, my God, he might actually get... Oh, the SCV repair. This guy's getting a lot of attention right now. I think this pro is seriously going to kill it out. Oh, uh, who wins this battle? This is the most intense battle ever. And, oh, no, it's still alive. <laughs> oh, God, I don't even know what happened there. The probe just gave up, though. Oh, God, that was so funny. That is seriously the most silly worker battle I think I've ever seen. That is worker battles. Uh, not nearly as entertaining as UFC, but why do you have so much money, Deather? Oh, my God, he has 500 minerals. Oh my god, he saved up almost 600 minerals before dropping down to Gateway because of that sick probe micro because it's Bronze League Heroes, man. Oh my god, that was absolutely hilarious. I can't believe the repairing the SCV actually ended up working. 
But regardless, we have two sets of workers chasing. <laughs> oh, we have two sets of workers chasing each other. This guy just randomly gives up. He's like, all right, now that I've moved out all the way across the map, I'm going to head home. So we do have both players sending their probes back. Why is it always the Protoss players have the worst macro? I feel like every time in Bronze League Heroes, it's just a bad macroing Protoss. Doesn't mean they're going to win or lose. It just seems to be a trend, and I'm going to stick to it. Uh, one SDB has returned home from his trip. Here comes uh, another one going down the Oregon Trail, and there he goes. We have a command center all the way uh, already for Tony here, so he's actually going to be pretty aggressively uh, expanding, which is pretty impressive. While, while Dether, he is true Bronze League Heroes material. He went for the 600 mineral gateway, followed up by a forge, followed up by the supply block, followed up by a second gateway, uh, and another pylon. All right, we, we have some work to do with you, Dether. This build could use a little bit of refinement. And by refinement, I mean look at what he's doing and do the absolute opposite he does have 18 workers on minerals which is like full saturation essentially but uh not oh god he's he's dropping the cannons this is when you know it is a spectacular bronze league heroes the in base I, i'm going to refer to this as a self-contain because you think that it would be good for defense but at this level of play when there's no threat at all ever we're just going to be calling it a self-contain so uh, you know, I told Dether, try to contain yourself, and he did. But um, all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to bed, guys. You can just, here, look. I'm, I'm just going to put it on his point of view, and I'm going to go to bed so you don't have to deal with the bad jokes anymore. But uh, anyways, we do have a lot of gateways. Oh, God, way too many gateways, actually. So we have gotta, we're going to be having a grand total of five gateways. Uh, Cybernex Core is done. No gas on the way, though. So that's that's the thing. No gas there. He's already falling way behind in supply. Oh, the double gas. Double gas after cybernetics core. Keep in mind that you can't do a single thing with the cybernetics core if you don't already have gas. You can't get warp gate. You can't get stalkers. You can't get air attack upgrades. You can't even build the buildings that it unlocks. But look at this. He's got a pretty dope rally point up here. Uh, well, we'll see if he manages to get warp gates a little bit later. I love how he has the three probes. These, these six probes are so ready to go right now. They're like, all right. All right, we're going to mine this like crazy. It's going to be great. We just have to wait for two minutes. Two minutes. Uh, did one probe teleport over there? That was kind of weird. Anyways, he does have the uh, probes on the gas now. Is Oh, my God. Six gateways off of one base. This guy knows something that we don't. And... Uh, he is going to get quite supply block there. At the same time, though, Tony over here at uh, at the Terran player base got a full duration supply block. Stimpak is on the way. Uh, not a whole lot of production going on. You can see this one is halted. These ones are about to be halted right there. And uh, the factory is done. Supply Depot about to finish up here. And he is going to be landing that base over there. I, I should really just call this game the Supply Block Heroes. Not, not saying I do much better. But we have seen, I think, a record number of supply blocks so far. But not anymore with these six gateways. Oh, my God. That is ridiculous. No no warp gate, by the way. Pro tip of the day, which was the same pro tip I gave in the last video, is always make warp gate. It is literally the best upgrade in, like, in the history of upgrades. It is so good. Here goes. Here comes the... <laughs> oh, God. It's Bronze League Hero Zealots. Everyone brace yourselves for impact. Because these Bronze League Hero Zealots are barreling towards wherever the hell this is. Actually, I don't know what's going to be happening there. But there goes the Bronze League Hero Zealots moving out the first five. Surely they will have a lot of success here, especially with their rallied reinforcements here. I think Tony's scanning and is like, I, I'm terrified of the fact that he doesn't have Warp Gate right now. What he's also should be terrified about is that he's completely supply blocked. Four depots are on the way in the back of the base. That's why we love Bronze League Heroes, though. And the Stalkers are like, screw this, man. We're getting the hell out of here. No Marauder Slow and no Stim. This is the, I, I would love if they if neither of them got any sort of tech whatsoever. You can only get the units. You can't get any of the upgrades for them. So my life for ire. I got to hand it, though, to these zealots. They managed to survive a battle, which is more than can be said for the majority of units, uh, especially zealots and the Bronze League heroes. Now, what is fascinating to me is that he can actually afford to produce off of all six of these gateways off of one base still no warp gate research if only i could go back in time reach through the monitor 
slap him in the face and then hit the G key so he can continue getting his warp gate. Uh, that would be great. The Forge here not really serving much of a purpose, but he did expand, and we're all very proud of him. I called his mother. Uh, she can't believe it. She says this is a big development for him. Uh, does have the expansion over there, and probes are queued up as well. You know, honestly, 16 probes on the main base, and uh, if he rallies more workers down here, that's not even that bad. I mean, for Bronze League Heroes, that's not bad. But uh, the six gateways still chilling out over here. I got to say that Tony, oh, God, here comes another supply block. He is just hitting all those supply blocks right on cue. But uh, Tony, he's got a good idea. What he's doing is a good idea in theory. He's got lots of production. He's doing the add-ons. He's trying to do a drop, which I probably wouldn't recommend for someone with uh, 65 APM. Probably not a good idea. But uh, either way, he's trying to get out lots of units. I got to hand it to him. Tony is the MVP of this game so far. Minus the supply blocks. We're going to we're going to put that on his uh, on his little trophy. It says MVP except for in supply blocks, which that one is going to death or because he has not had nearly as many. But he also doesn't have warp gate. It's so weird to me to see gateway units being built out of gateways. I feel like we're, we're going back in time to the brood war days. Oh, excuse me, but uh, we do have 800 gas here. He could queue up a bunch of sentries if he wanted to. Here comes the drop. And he's got two Widow Mines there. You got to remember that Deather, there's no detection, I feel like, for this entire game. So here comes the Widow Mines right now. Got to burrow them right here. Runs them right into the middle line. Very, very nice. And splash damage there. Takes out a couple probes. A couple Marines here as well. Probes going down. Nice shot there. Four kills on that Widow Mine. Here comes the Zealot right now. They load up inside that medevac. And he is going to boogie on out of here. Ah, using that booster ability. Look at him finding the key right there, the B key. And we'll be able to drop inside the main base right now. It does look like the Marines are going to be scaring these probes away. We got the probe transfer back. And that's not even a probe transfer. That's just like a probe hide at this corner of the base and then go back to work here. So we'll see if we can clean this up. Remember, there are no observers right now. So these Widow Mines just getting free hits on the probes. Almost managed to kill off like every single probe there, which would have been bad news bears. Is this Nexus misplaced? Come on, you guys. Come on! Why do you keep doing this? I feel like this is misplaced. Just look at the mini map. That does not look accurate to me. I, it might be accurate, though. I'm going to be honest. During Bronze League Heroes, I just assume that the Nexus are never placed correctly. All right, so these Widow Mines are still chilling out over here, and I feel like uh, these are the flowers of death here right here. Boom! Goes more probes and even more probes. Ten kills on one, six kills on the other. The Medivac's headed back home. Looking a little uh, bit of a... You ever realize how bumpy those rides are on those medevacs? I would be puking everywhere. But uh, the army right now for Tony, starting to look pretty standard for Terran. Uh, he's not spending his money the best, but he is young money man. He's got 29 SCVs there. I got to say, his saturation is good. I mean, he is a little oversaturated, but when you're learning the game, it's better to be oversaturated than... Oh, God, he's supply blocked again. Uh, it's better to be oversaturated than undersaturated. So I'll give him that. Um, double engineering base. Very nice. More depots. Oh, my God. So many. Uh, who's told to build all these other supply depots? Oh, my God. It's actually... S he has six, seven, eight SCVs building depots right now. He's like, you know what, Husky? I will ne I'm going to make so many supply depots that I'm not even going to be supply blocked in my next game. That is how many he has right now. So we'll see. And he did tell them to go back to work, which is some next level stuff there. And he definitely will not be supply blocked anytime soon. We do, though, have the infamous Dark Temple. Oh, my God, these things are still here. Eight kills and 12 kills. Why is he keeping his stalkers over the Widow Mines? That is the real question of the hour right now, is that he's like, you know what? Just, just take my stalkers. They're yours. Take my probes. They're yours. I don't care because I have Bronze League Hero DTs. Now, on one hand, Bronze League Hero Zealots are the most suicidal, emo, worthless units on the planet. And on the flip side... Dark Templar are the most overpowered broken units in Bronze League Heroes because people don't know how to get detection. It's just a thing. I mean, we're witnessing it right here as the Widow Mines are not detected. What, uh, oh, I think they got even more kills. 11 kills and 13 kills. Apparently, I've been missing it. But uh, either way, a lot of kills there. And he's keeping his stalkers right on top of it. Decides to finally move him to the right side. But the DT count is now looking menacing. And, you know, I wouldn't even count out Deathor right now. Even though he's a hundred, literally a hundred. Oh, God. Oh, more probes. Even though he's a hundred, over a hundred supply behind right now, he has the Ace card. He has the Dark Templar. And I want to say, I think this is the first game I've ever cast where Dark Templar are on the production tab, not being warped in, 
but being built slowly out of the gateways. I think that is literally the first game in years of casting. But Dether is on the move. He's like, all right, I'm 100 supply behind, but I'm 100 awesomeness ahead. So we'll see if that's going to end up working out. The Marine and Marauder Jail plus one attack on the way. I uh, would like to see the plus one armor just because it's useful. Oh, Dether, what's he doing? He, he's just spamming a lot there. Not quite sure what that is about. But here we go. The DTs are on the front line. One of the DTs, he doesn't even care. He's not even involved in this fight until just now. Oh, my God. He's on the move command. What are you doing? The DTs are doing so much damage. Killing out this entire army. Oh my god, and he has full energy on the command stairs. Here we go, just hacking and slashing. I love how he's still 100 supply behind after that. Oh god, the DTs finished out the rest of the army. Don't lose your chance. You want to kill them all off before they scan. Oh my god, that's so many. Why would you not scan? There's the scan. <laughs> the scans are always so late. I like to think in some alternate universe, the scans actually do not work in Bronze League level games. All right, so the orbital does go down, but that's no big deal because Tony has so much fire. Oh my God, the depots are gonna trap the DTs. The DTs trying to engage right now. I think the scan is gonna clean up the remainder of those three DTs do remain. There's the scan to clean it up. So the DTs are not gonna win the game for Dether, but my God, did he do a lot of damage with that. Another well thought. Oh my god, are these still alive? Why are these still alive? 20. <laughs> he tried. He's trying to the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He's like, all right. All right, I got it. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. This is so funny. Alright, so he's like, alright, alright, these things have killed 41 of my probes. I better get some detection. And he drops the cannon on, on the widow mine so it doesn't build. Alright, alright, that cannon will eventually clean up these widow mines. Both of these widow mines are commanders, by the way. They still get one last kill before going down. Alright, here we go. They are finally going to die. I'm not going to watch anything else on the map until this is done dying. There we go. A very gratifying explosion from underground. And there they go. Okay, that one wasn't as gratifying. But uh, either way, those have been taken care of. The DTs are out on the field once again. Can he go two for two? I don't think so with this engagement because not only is there going to be detection, I think he may have hotkeyed one of his orbital commands. So he is ready to go. His fingers are ready. The drop is ready. Oh, God, do we have more kills up here? Only one kill. On the widow mine. Still no warp gate, by the way, but this DT going to town here. Trying to take him out. And oh, combat shields is too good. Not gonna be able to kill us up. There's the scan, but typ typical Bronze League hero scans, man. Nothing there to actually kill off that DT. Here we go. The DTs are loose inside the main. Can he actually make it happen? Oh, he raised the depot. That is the most clutch play I've ever seen in Bronze League Heroes. With the scan, the Wombo combo chains it together, and then he leaves the game. Dether has left the game. He was defeated. But, man, did he at least go out in a hilarious way. As uh, you can see, Tony right there to sign him. I kind of want to go back just to see how much damage those DTs actually did. Uh, because that was too hilarious. Let's see. Was it after this? Uh, yeah, so the Dark Shrine's done. And he's got to manually build DTs, which is something I've never seen before, which just makes it that much better. The Widow Mines over here, he's, he's just blowing up everybody. I love how he keeps the Stalkers on top of the Widow Mines. Probably one of my favorite parts of that. And boom, 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 killing off so many. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We got to back it up just a second. Hang on, hang on. I know everyone, everyone chill out. Chill out for just a second. I know we're all really excited right now. All right, so we have... Nine, 184 supply. What is the army supply at? All right, the army supply is at 122. Don't even look at death or supply because we already know he's got 122 supply. Nothing in the production tab. So this is going to be a good example. Oh, uh, all right, lost 10 supply. Now he's lost 20 supply. 30 supply. And, oh, it's slowing down a little bit. The medevacs have arrived. They're starting to heal. So I think he went from 122. Oh, God, the DTs are still going to town. Just destroying this army. 86. Oh, God, it, it still continues. 
And it can throw 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 50 supply to DTs. Oh, it's still going. He's not done yet. He is not done yet. Uh, is that 60 supply right there? And he finishes off the rest of the army. Oh, God, those DTs were so good. And then the scan. The scan in slow motion just makes it that much better. The one Marauder is like, hey, hey, guys, I see a bunch of DTs over here. Gu guys? Guys? So the delayed scan, always so good in Bronze League Heroes. And uh, the Widow Mines over here. Oh, God, those cannons made me laugh way too hard. So anyways, you can submit your replays at huskyreplays at gmail.com, where Bronze League Heroes, we love to cast the very best of the very worst, which is, a, this was a good example. Uh, you can send the replays to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Do not send them to any of my other email accounts, as they will not get read there, uh, because I have an email specifically for this. So huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend, Sinvicta, got his little link -a dink down below. He is the one who sorts through them. And he, he has to go through a lot of bad ones to find the diamonds in the rough. Or the diamonds in the bronze. I don't know. I was trying to make a good analogy. Anyway, so hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time.